Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome into WCBN's coverage of the 2024 College Football National Championship. We are live from NRG Stadium, the home of the now playoff-bound Houston Texans. The saying goes that everything's a little bit bigger in Texas, and well, that's certainly true for the stakes of this ball game. This is, of course, the national championship. The best two teams in the country this year, the undefeated Michigan Wolverines, the undefeated Washington Huskies will face off very shortly. I'm Alex Miller, delighted to host a brief pregame show. I'm joined by Kendall Spencer, who will be on color commentary for the first half. And Charlie, member of the illustrious Michigan Daily Football Beat. So guys, if I, if I sit here looking around, the thought that comes to my mind is this. These two teams have made it nearly to the top of the college football mountain. And it seems that this year is the best chance for them to win the national championship. Not only, of course, are they here, they've made it 14-0. Both these teams are losing a lot of talent in the next coming years. Michigan with Blake Corum as a senior, offensive line of graduate students, possibly J.J. McCarthy leaving, Washington has Penix leaving, Odunze is a senior, and a defense starting 10 seniors. So with that in mind, both these teams feel like this is their year to win a national championship. Kendall and Charlie, I'm gonna start with this. Where do each of these teams have to excel to win this ball game? I mean, yeah. oh. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about, obviously, what I'm not individually terming the unstoppable force that is the Washington offense versus the immovable object, which is the Michigan defense. And that has been, you know, talked through on every single media platform in the country. But I think what this game is going to come down to is, maybe less politely, the stoppable force versus the movable object. It's Michigan's offense versus Washington's defense. Both have not had the level of success lately that they would have liked to see, and I really think that's what this game is going to come down to. Yeah, I would mostly agree with Kendall there. I think that for Michigan, this game really comes down to whether or not its offense can keep pace. When you're playing against Michael Penix Jr., the number one thing is, can your offense keep up with the production that he's putting up? And I think, yes, Michigan's defense is going to have to hold its own. But more than that, the question comes down to whether J.J. McCarthy can get going, whether Blake Corm can get going, and if they can keep pace with the amount of points that Washington's going to be able to put up. And alternatively, I think for Washington, the game really comes down to just how much can Michael Penix Jr. do for you. He's won games from before. He won, last, he won it last week for them against Texas. Both games against Oregon, he was the star. He is their star, and the stage is the brightest it's ever going to be. Can he shine? And I think that's what it comes down to for Washington. Absolutely. I mean, we've seen Penix step up in big moments against Texas, of course, but the Washington run game, they might not lean on it today knowing Michigan has a stout front, but they really struggled in the run game against Texas, and it'll be interesting to see how much that passing offense can carry the load. But, so, Kendall, you touched on it. The other side of this coin, the Michigan offense, Washington defense. If you're Michigan, where do you look to get production in this one? Washington, if you look at their uh, defensive statistics, they average 122.9 efficiency passer rating against opposing offenses this season. J.J. McCarthy has been, you know, the talking point of this Michigan Wolverines team all year long, and we've seen what he can do. In the past couple games, he hasn't reached that. I think if there has ever been, it sounds so silly to say there is a get-right game in a national championship, but if there is a defense that you can, you know, really start to air the ball out on and feel confident about, it is this Huskies defense. I agree with Kendall there mostly, but I think that the one thing for Michigan is when this Michigan offense has been its best is when Blake Corum is going. J.J. McCarthy can be fine. J.J. McCarthy can be okay or even a little bit worse than average. But if Blake Corum is going, this Michigan offense can win. And when he doesn't look good, that's when Michigan's offense stalls. Last week against Alabama, the worst points of Michigan's game in offense was when Blake Corum was running two or three yards a carry. When he's going, when he's grounding out five, six yards on the ground on first down, that's where Michigan's offense gets going. So you can look at Washington's passer rating stats all you want, but I just think Michigan sticks to its identity. And if Blake Corum is good tonight, I think Michigan's offense does what it needs to do. I mean, I absolutely agree. Wolverines are averaging 4.3 yards per carry. Huskies give up 4.4. So this, like you mentioned, is also ideal game for a Blake Corum domination. And that's exactly what the Wolverines are looking for. And I think there's also another benefit of getting Corum in the run game going is Washington's a team that picks up a lot of scoring quickly in chunk plays, the long throw to Odunze or Polk or McMillan. But if, let's say Washington marches down and scores a quick touchdown, 
and Michigan goes back on the field and hypothetically pounds the ball into the ground and has a seven minute, eight minute scoring drive on 15 plays. You can take Washington out of their rhythm a little bit and I, I think that's something Michigan might look for in this one. That's 100% right. If you look at the Penn State game when Michigan was playing Penn State, they wasted pretty much the entire third quarter on one drive that ended with a touchdown of Blake Corm just running, running, running. And I think that against a Washington offense that wants to touch the ball as many times as possible, if you can keep them out of their hands just by wasting clock, you're in a good position. Michigan's uh, offensive game has also dominated the clock, as you've mentioned, and I think if there's ever a guy to do it against, you want to make sure you're getting as much time off the clock for Penix Jr. as possible. One thing that we, the, both teams have struggled with in their semifinal games was special teams. There were some noticeable blunders, some that almost could have costed Michigan the entire game. Charlie, what do you think both of these teams need to do in this game to make sure that that doesn't end up being the story going into Tuesday morning? I mean, I think the honest truth with special teams is that you just want it to be a factor that you don't notice. And last week, special teams was noticed for all the wrong reasons. There were two muffed punts. I think Michigan was trying to bite off a little bit more than it could chew with Samaj Morgan's first muffed punt. And with Jake Thaw, it just looked like nerves, but he was able to recover it, prevent a safety. So I think that if the special teams can just get to the point where it's not at the top of mind, I think Michigan's again in a good position. And secondarily, I think last game was probably the worst game for Michigan punter Tommy Doman. He really just didn't have the efficiency that we've seen from him most of the season. He's normally rocketing him 45, 46, even 50 yards, and that wasn't really there last week. I think if Michigan, against an offense that is so explosive, if you can pin them down as far back as possible with Tommy Doman's leg, if he's back on, I think that's a really good position for Michigan. Absolutely, I completely agree, and I feel like I don't want to necessarily say that it all comes down to luck, but for a team that has done so well on their special teams this season, something like that just seems like it's a complete, you know, it's like baffling to see something like that go so wrong. And I obviously know they've practiced a bunch this week, but going into this one, I would not be shocked if we see both teams, especially the Wolverines, kind of return to form. I would agree with that. I think special teams, when there's mistakes, for the most part, it's anomalies, mm -hmm. right? Like, people don't miss extra points often. That doesn't signal something wrong with James Turner. He's hit 50 yarders, I think, in the past two games. He just missed one against Alabama, right? And so James Turner, I would expect to be back to form. You know, I'm, I'm sure the long snapping is going to be better as well. But I just think that overall there are a few errors, and for the most part it just should be a cleaner game. I absolutely agree. There's just really, you know, no precedent for that happening. Luckily, it didn't end up being like the kind of fatal blow that it could have been against the Crimson Tide. And hopefully that, you know, maybe it can even be a difference maker in this game. Now that we've discussed kind of all areas of the ball, Charlie, what's a potential X factor for the Wolverines that you think could play a big role in this contest? I mean, I touched on it earlier, but again, I think every game the X factor is J.J. McCarthy and Blake Corum for Michigan. And so I think if those two are on, right, it's a really good game for their offense. But I think if you look for maybe someone more underrated, I think this is a massive, massive game for Will Johnson in the secondary, right? He's going up against Romo Dunsey, one of the best uh, wide receivers in college football, and Conversely, Will Johnson is one of the best cornerbacks in college football. Who wins that matchup could be really telling for how the game goes, especially with such a pass-centric offense for Washington. I, I agree with you. Absolutely. You know, there's been a lot of special moments from this Wolverine secondary so far this season, including the game-sealing interception against Ohio State. And there's never been, compared to maybe OSU, a bigger test than this uh, receiving core for the Washington Huskies completely agree that they're going to need to step up. And I mean, I think that that also just goes past Will Johnson, right? The secondary mm -hmm. is going to be massive today, as you said. And I think for guys like uh, Josh Wallace and Mikey San Ristel, I think it's the last game for both of them. And I think this is kind of really where they get to prove themselves. They're looking ahead to the NFL draft. They're looking ahead to NFL careers. Mikey San Ristel has had a fantastic year. But this is one of those ones where going up against guys like McMillan and Polk, there's going to be moments where there could be mismatches. And so how they can hold up, if they can contain the Washington passing offense, uh, which is something that nobody's really been able to do this year, mm -hmm. is going to say a lot about them. Absolutely. 
Wolverines currently giving up average of 5.8 yards per, per pass, 10.4 yards per catch, and 150 per game. Where does that line up against the dominant Washington Huskies? Well, they're averaging 9.4 per pass, 14 per catch, and 350 per game. This is going to be a challenge unlike anything the Wolverines have seen this year and how they respond could be the difference maker. I think that's the most fun part about this game, which is that you've got, I think, not really arguably the best defense in college football going up against the most exciting offense in college football. Mm -hmm. You've got these two powerhouses just slamming against each other, and it's almost like ramming your head into a wall, right? you got to see which is going to break first, your head or the wall. And so, I mean, I, I just I think that Penix is going to be masterful at moments, and I also think that Michigan secondary can make him look pedestrian at moments. It's just... They both have the capability. You just don't know which way it's going to go. Well, well, excuse us. We had a bit of a headphone issue, but I am now back, I believe. But, Charlie, you were touching on it. This Michigan defense, the defensive backs have a lot on their plate with Odunze, McMillan, and Polk. It's a absolutely, I mean, those are three NFL receivers right there that Michael Penix, who's an NFL quarterback in the future, most likely, had a lot of talent to work with. Getting ready here for the national anthem. We want to apologize. We've had a couple issues with our headsets going in and out. And we're trying to fix that. We'll be getting, coming up really shortly, will be the national anthem. After that, Alex Miller is going to switch off his headset. We're going to say bye to Charlie, who's been so gracious as to come talk to us. And then we will get, bring on Kellen Flynn to get this game started. just mentioned we're now introducing the band seeing America the beautiful
Washington, including members of the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, Space Force, and the Coast Guard. Competition is at the heart of sport. It's its most essential ingredient. As Americans, it's something we are uniquely obsessed with, being the best. Here at NRG Stadium, there is no rich history of tradition at the college level, no tales from great teams of yesteryear, reminiscing on fond memories. We are not here for tradition or nostalgia, but for competition. We are here because these two teams are the best in all the land to perfect, unblemished, undefeated teams. We are here to watch two teams compete at the highest level under the brightest lights for the future and the legacy that is up for the taking. Michigan and Washington, one will ink its name in the pages of college football history on this field tonight. An opportunity to call themselves champions for Michigan, not just to be champions of the West as heard in the fight song, but from sea to shining sea, from the redwoods in the west to the Arcadias in the east, from Pictured Rock's national shoreline in the UP of Michigan to the Rio Grande River here in Texas, national champions. That is what it's at stake. Welcome to Houston, Texas, and welcome to the national championship. My name is Kellen Flynn, and you are tuned in to WCBN Sports live coverage of Michigan football. WCBN Sports is the official student voice of Michigan athletics, and we are 
proud to be concluding our coverage this season from Houston in the national championship. And by my side today is William Gregory and Kendall Spencer. William, Kendall, this is the national championship. I don't think much else needs to be said. Thank you guys for being here with me. Such an exciting opportunity for us to be here to call the national championship. But these are two really, really good football teams. This is what we expected at the beginning of the season for Michigan to come back to the national title. And it's very important uh, that with all these returning players uh, for Michigan to, to win this game, so many players are going to graduate. And, you know, not to talk about next season as much, but uh, Michigan this year, so many of these players, Blake Corum, Mike Sainer still, Mike Barrett, all came back to play in this game. Uh, and, and we all know how much it means to them. So it's, it's great to be here. There isn't a stage bigger than this. I honestly think I can feel the fire from the pyrotechnics all the way up here. I mean, this is the dream matchup. Michigan, you know, they've battled through adversity all season. Washington in a final, you know, swan song for the Pac-12. I mean, you couldn't write a story better than this one. And Kendall, you bring up a good point because the Pac-12 obviously folding after this game in terms of college football, one of the most storied conferences, a Power Five conference, Washington obviously joining the Big Ten next season. Michigan and Washington will actually rematch in Seattle in October of next year. But tonight, no one's focused on anything else other than what's going on here at NRG Stadium, what's going on in between these four white lines. And these are two really good football teams. Obviously, both coming in here undefeated, 14-0. Michigan with a easy schedule to start the season throughout the season people questioned them their high ranking they were just dominating the competition in the Big Ten and when it got to the later season schedule with Penn State Maryland Ohio State and then the Big Ten championship against Iowa Michigan did not blink and handled their business in each of those games and obviously in the Rose Bowl the Wolverines won an absolute thriller an instant classic game to punch their ticket here to Houston. Washington, on the other hand, was not coming into the season the favorites in the Pac-12. The Trojans of USC, the Oregon Ducks, were very much so seen as favorites over them, and they've been doubted all season and have won every single time. Kalen DeBoer, one of the best head coaches in the country, has this team humming as the coin is tossed up into the air. Washington has won the toss, and they have, I believe, deferred for the second half, so Michigan is going to get the football first here in Houston. Rayshon Benny, an honorary captain in the game for Michigan after he suffered a foot ankle injury in that win over Alabama in the Rose Bowl. Back to Washington. Knock off Oregon twice, even though they were underdogs in the Pac-12 championship. Then knock off Texas, who they were also underdogs to in the Sugar Bowl. This team has been doubted and doubted and doubted, and they answer the call every time. Will tonight be different, William and Kendall? That's the question. Michigan in all blues today with the famed wing helmet on top, and Washington in all whites. White top, white bottoms, white socks, white cleats, white gloves, white accessories for the Huskies. William, what do you make of this matchup here today? Well. I was saying before the game, if I were Michigan and I won the toss, I'd elect to receive. Washington is outscoring their opponents 333 to 186 in the first 30 minutes, 137 to 65 in the first quarter. Michigan wants to put a score on the board first, especially after starting out a bit slow against Alabama. Uh, now, we don't want to see J.J. almost throwing an interception on the first play, as was overturned, uh, the Caleb Downs pick on the first throw. But running the football... Getting out to an early lead is essential for the Wolverines in this first half. Kendall, on the flip side, the Husky offense versus the Michigan defense, real quick. I mean, it's, you know, what everyone's here to see. Michael Penix Jr., arguably one of the, some people think the Heisman deserving, you know, player. I mean, I think he's going to come out. I think he's going to be motivated. Brady Gross boots it away to get us going, and... Samaj Morgan is stopped around the 15-yard line on his return. Good kick coverage from the Huskies. 
And that's where Michigan will set up shop. J.J. McCarthy going to get the football first, just like he did in the Rose Bowl. William talked about it, that first play, a near heart attack for Wolverine fans all across the country with a near interception thrown along the far sideline. Wolverines won't huddle up to start. Trips to the left, Corum to the left of McCarthy. They bring Wilson and Loveland back over to the right side. Loveland flips back to the left, and it's a handoff to Corum early. Corum squeezes forward for about five, and Michigan staying ahead of the sticks, officially marked as a four-yard gain for the Wolverines. And that's the bread and butter. Blake Corum, uh, handoff out of the shotgun, first play. Weren't going to see much else from this Michigan football team. And this is a middling Washington rush defense. Everyone's looking for the Wolverines to run all over them. Wolverines spread it out here. Three receivers to the right, and then they tighten everybody up. Corum to the right of McCarthy, who's in the shotgun. Loveland in motion to the left side. J.J. looks that way, looks back over the middle. He's got his man, Cornelius Johnson, for the first down. And J.J. having enough time to work through his progressions. Back over the middle to Cornelius after looking left to Barner and Loveland, who we usually see him throw those button hooks to. Um, and, and J.J. off to an easy start so far. You talk about those easy completions. Michigan ran the ball on first down, short throw on second. First and 10 for the Wolverines. Ball on the 28. Max Bredesen checks into the game for Michigan. Split backfield. They bring Wilson left to right in motion. It's a handoff. Give to Corum. Corum looking for some space. He's got some up past the 30 toward the 35. And that's where the pile collapses. Bredesen lost his helmet on the play. And he's fired up about it. They're going to bring in an extra lineman, Miles Hinton, I think, in his place. He's got to come out for a play. Blake comes out, too. He had a convoy of blockers, did Corum, just kept churning, and I think his helmet fell off too, so that's the reason he's out. So they bring in Khalil Mullings as the substitute tailback for Corum. Mullings has been one of Harbaugh's favorite players this season. He uses them especially when they need just a short power run, like situations like these. Power formation for the Wolverines, JJ, shotgun. Motion to the pistol with Mullings behind him. They give to Mullings, Mullings. Trying to power forward, breaks through an arm tackle and continues to move the sticks. First down, Wolverines, ball on the 39. A lot of personnel changes so far for Michigan, uh, showing multiple sets as they want to do. Washington generally staying with the same defense, although they do have a substitution here on the edge. Julie Latuli Nas Nasanoa was the one who made the stop for Washington. First and 10 for the Wolverines. Clock ticks toward 12.30 in the first quarter. Pistol set for Michigan. And they'll give to, nope, it's a fake. J.J. throwing over the middle. Got his man Johnson on the left side. Threw it a little behind him, but a good adjustment from Cornelius Johnson to haul that in around midfield. McCarthy sold the fake well. Washington really tackled Blake Corum. They thought he had the football. Uh, it allowed J.J. to roll out left. Deliver the ball to Itele, I think, put some pressure on him there that forced that throw to be a little bit behind CJ. Looked like the play was going to be blown up. Michigan, offense humming early. Ball just shy of midfield at their own 49. First and 10 for the Wolverines. McCarthy works out of the shotgun. And he'll turn and give it to Mullings. Mullings breaks a couple of tackles. He's still on his feet as he's brought down close to the 36-yard line. Khalil Mullings bursting through tackles. And that's another Wolverine first down. And it's early in this game, but we've already seen the Washington defense struggle to contain the Michigan running backs. It takes two or three guys just to bring one man down. Harbaugh's going to probably continue to look to Mullings to bring that you know, strength and that aggression that the Huskies haven't been used to seeing. Trice and Dominique Campton combined for the tackle. McCarthy goes under center. Don't see this a lot from Michigan. Corum the single back. Two receivers to the right. They bring Roman Wilson right to left. JJ, play action, stepping up in the pocket, and he's going to go down for a sack. The whole pocket collapsed on McCarthy. Trice was in there. And that's a, the first negative play of the game for Michigan. And you're running to throw there, right? They come out, play fake. 
everybody covered downfield. I think they wanted Roman deep, uh, but Washington, great coverage on the back end. J.J. forced to hold on to the ball, tried to step up, swallowed whole. It was really M.J. Ale that got there first for the sack. Edwards checks into the game for the first time. Second and 14 for Michigan. Clock ticks under 10.30 to go here in the first quarter. Ball on the 41. And they'll give to Edwards. Edwards looking for some space. Bounces it to the left. Donovan Edwards. 20, 10. Reservations for six for Donovan Edwards. Touchdown, Wolverines. Donovan Edwards hit the hole initially, bounced it to the left, and had plenty of running room. William, take it away. For the last few games, I think a lot of people have been wondering where Donovan Edwards has been. Um, some people may think he has problems with his vision. On that play, he did just go right up the middle, was able to bounce off uh, a few different linemen. He was in there. I think, really, he was shielded by his own offensive line. Able to bounce left, kind of reminiscent of the touchdown he had against Penn State. Turner's extra point is up and good, 7-0. But Edwards, against Penn State, was able to bounce a run right, really took the top off that game. He still has the game-breaking ability, but Michigan, it seems, has been picking his spots where to deploy him. On second and 14, I was a bit surprised that they would just go with running the football, but uh, a, a great play by Edwards to stay on his feet. Great play by Michigan's offensive line to keep blocking downfield. Looking at the replay, Ladarius Henderson still going to allow Edwards to just escape outside. And Kendall, how about that work from the left side of that offensive line in particular to just open up? I mean, it was like parting the Red Sea. That was a huge lane for Edwards to run through. If there's one thing that Michigan is going to do, especially in their offensive line, is they're not they're going to refuse to get out body. They're not going to give up anything. And that was a perfect example. We saw them, you know, really making those blocks, giving, allowing Edwards to find that opening after he spun out, just running straight up the middle. And with situations like that, that's something where the Wolverines really have a chance to take advantage. I mentioned it earlier, but things aren't sticking for the Washington defense. They aren't making the tackles that they need to. Prime example, and I think the Wolverines offensive line, you know, coming into this, Washington is actually is one of the best offensive lines in the nation. They got an award for it. I think the Wolverines have something to prove. That was an eight-play, 84-yard scoring drive for Michigan. Encompassed four minutes and 42 seconds of game clock, capped off by a 41-yard scamper from Donovan Edwards. And going into this game, there was a lot of talk about Michigan's offensive game plan and is the best defensive game plan for Michigan actually just the offense holding on to the football and keeping number nine in white off the field, Michael Penix. Not a necessarily extremely long scoring drive there for Michigan, but you take the seven. <laughs> you take the seven any day of the week. And last week in the Rose Bowl, Alabama is a team that's known for pressure cookery, pressure cooking their opponents, running the football, keeping the game not, not close, but without a reason for mistakes to be made. And obviously Alabama made mistakes in the Rose Bowl, but it wasn't because of the decisions they made. They didn't throw it. Uh, they didn't throw deep as much as they had before. Uh, they chose to run the football a lot, chose to run Milrow, keep the ball on the ground, keep the clock churning. And I think Michigan's game plan should be similar in this one. Um, continue to run the football. Washington, the only time that Michigan went backwards was a pass play that the Huskies covered well. Every running play, Michigan was gaining chunk yardage. I think that's what you saw against Texas. Uh, for Washington, their run game, even without Jonathan Brooks, the Longhorns succeeded. But it was when they got down after a few punts, being down 13, um, that Washington was finally able to put that game away in a way, but they still had to make a play on the last play uh, for Elijah Jackson, the cornerback, to break up a pass in the end zone. And as we debut for the first time tonight, our broadcaster cam, hello to everyone tuning in at home and wherever you may be around the world. Love hearing where you're tuning in from, so drop it in the chat if you feel so inclined. Michigan gonna boot it away with Tommy Doman now as we're gonna get our first chance to look at this potent Washington offense. Doman will send it deep and through the end zone. No chance for a return there, so Penix and company will get the football at the 25. And 
Kendall, break down real quick this offensive attack from Washington. What should we be looking for? Washington is going to air the ball out. Everybody knows it, and so it seems so simple. The problem is you just can't stop it. Michael Penix Jr. coming off an unbelievable season, and he has receivers like Roma Adunze, Jalen McMillan. He's going to carve you up. You know that. You can't do anything about it. Huskies open up under center. Dylan Johnson, the lone tailback. They toss it to him, going left. Good hole opens up, but it's Keon Sab that's there to wrap up and stop his momentum. Junior Colson in there as well for Michigan. Six-yard pickup on the toss. And Dylan Johnson coming into this game hurt. We'll see how much he plays coming off after the first play, a good gain of six on first down. He was actually carted off at the end of that game against Texas. I thought he was the best player on the field in Washington's Pac-12 championship win against Oregon. Shotgun look for the Huskies here. They bring Polk in motion right to left. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Motion out the tailback. Penix looking to the right side. He's got his man, McMillan. And that's going to be enough for a first down for the Huskies. Penix starting off one for one, finding one of his favorite targets in Jalen McMillan. Kind of a bench concept to the outside. I don't know where Josh Wallace was going on that. He comes over to make the tackle, but he needs to be out there in the flat. Empty look now for the Huskies. Penix looks over to the sideline to make an adjustment. Three receivers to the left side. A tight end in line, and then one to the right. They bring the tailback back. Big shift. Penix claps his hands, receives the snap, rolls out to the left, looking downfield. He's got the running back, and that's going to be enough for a gain of three. And Will Nixon is the backup running back here for Washington in this game. Um, we could see some other players, not of their kick returner. Richard Newton, another running back, but Nixon gets the first snap with, Jill, with Dylan Johnson out. Nixon, a Texas native, hails from Waco, previously Nebraska at Nebraska. Training. And they'll give it to him again, this time on a handoff up the middle, nowhere to go. That stout Michigan front swallowed him up. Chris Jenkins was in there, the mutant. And I'm curious to see how much Washington is going to do that today. Two passes get them close to midfield, then you just waste the play up the middle to the strength of the Michigan defense. Third down and five now. Probably another quick breaker outside. Jenkins just threw the left guard, Kalepo. It's a very light Washington offensive line despite the Joe Moore award. Two receivers to the left, tailback to the left of Penix. They bring McMillan a motion, left to right. Penix dropping back to throw, going to throw left side. Got his man, break, broken tackle. First down and more, and he's up past the 40. That was Tybo Rogers, one of these other running backs you just mentioned, William. He's one of the other backs that will work in. Keon Sab misses an easy tackle there that would have prevented a first down. He's in the game because Quentin Johnson, we still haven't seen him, was questionable coming in. Sab made a huge tackle in that Rose Bowl against Alabama to get Michigan a chance. Misses one there. First and 10 for the Huskies. 7.19 to go here in the first quarter. Ball on the Michigan 42-yard line. Sab is a rangy player. Useful to have him back there in the pass game. Picked off a couple of passes this season. Had a pick six against Minnesota. Free rusher coming at Penix. Dumps it off for Rodgers, and Rodgers can't find it. Incomplete. Those linebacker blitzes have been very effective for Michigan this season. Junior Colson screaming off the right side, unblocked. Penix has to hurry the throw, and it's underthrown. And for all his success, one place where he hasn't excelled is outside of the pocket. His, EP, his um, expected points per play drop significantly becoming sort of a middle-of-the-line quarterback. I want to get Penix out of structure. Empty set now for Penix as they bring Nixon into the backfield to his left. The tight end, Devin Colt, motions over to the left side. Three receivers to the right. And it's a handoff up the middle, but a flag throws is thrown before the play. So we'll await the call from our... Head referee for tonight's game, Marcus Woods. It's an ACC crew officiating tonight's national championship. And 
And so no flag is thrown, or the flag is rescinded, but Washington called timeout before the snap. It's going to be an illegal formation. Um, and those procedural penalties are killer. Washington has to lose a penalty now. Kalen DeBoer, um, an excellent coach across all levels of football, NAIA, Division II, Division I, um, and as a coordinator as well. As a coordinator. And those type of penalties are what kill a team that is at a talent disadvantage in this game, uh, is, I think, at a structural disadvantage with the way Michigan just plays football. Uh, and, and those type of penalties have to clean up. Definitely upset to have to call a timeout there. DeBoer pulled up from the lower levels of football to this Washington job. He was previously the offensive coordinator at Indiana, but he's been at NAIA Sioux Falls, uh, Division II, uh, another Division II school, Eastern Michigan as an offensive coordinator, and he's won at every level. So many teams, uh, I think, so many programs in college football try to hire coaches that are cosmetically appealing but sometimes you just got to hire a football coach that wins. And Lance Leipold at Kansas State, you see this, beat the eventual national runner-up TCU in the Big 12 Championship last season. And I could go on and on with coaches that come up from lower levels with success to FBS. DeBoer is just the latest name. He's only won a handful of games, I think 11. He uh, lost a handful of games? Or, yeah, lost a handful of games, excuse me. DeBoer has only lost about 11 games, if I remember correctly, uh, in his head coaching career, undefeated this season. And William, you mentioned something, the talent composite. For those of you that aren't familiar with that, it's a rating of the team as a total. The, how Through their recruiting ranks. Through recruiting stars. And so for some context, the top teams in the country are Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State. Michigan slots in right behind Penn State and before Florida at number 14. And Washington is at 26, right behind Missouri, right ahead of Michigan State. And that get, might give you some context yeah. for the high school recruiting classes and kind of the pre presumed level of talent on each of these teams. Washington with three walk-ons, former walk-ons, that start for them. Uh, Michigan with a number of three stars and unranked recruits that start for them as well. It, it's about development. Obviously, these lists aren't an end-all, be-all. Michigan's beaten. Alabama and Ohio State, they're in the top five. They also beat Michigan State, the program right, uh, rated right behind Washington, 49 to nothing. They're not going to beat Washington 49 to nothing today, um, but it, it is a good baseline to know. A lot of, or almost all of the champions before this season were ranked at least in the top 10 in composite recruiting. This is an extreme outlier in this game. The two teams that came into the playoff ranked the highest, Alabama number one and Texas number six. Obviously both lost. So that should take us to the end of our first media timeout. Penix and company set up to scrimmage at the Michigan 42. Second and 10, 7.01 to go here in the first quarter. Wolverines on top, 7-0 behind a Donovan Edwards score. And it's a screen set up for Rome Adunze. Adunze looking for space. He's got some and more than the first down, brought down at the 25. And that's the first touch for who some believe is the best receiver in the country in Roma Dunze. And Washington has the most 20 plus yard plays of any team this season. Michigan allows the second fewest. They're getting touches for Adunze behind the line of scrimmage, have yet to take the top off. Penix set up to work at the 26, first and 10 for the Huskies. Dropping back to throw. Penix, pressure, dumps it off, and it's behind Nixon. And right there, he was flushed out of the pocket. I believe that was Jalen Harrell coming off the edge. And Kendall, like you said, once you get Penix out of the pocket, he becomes kind of an average quarterback. Got him off his spot there to throw wide and incomplete. And now Michigan has a chance to generate a play that would lead to a third and long. Third and long, excuse me. Pistol set for Washington. Johnson back in the game at tailback. Penix makes a check with his O-line. Both teams making a couple of adjustments. They flick McMillan to the left side. Penix, it's a give to McMillan on the end around. McMillan looking for the sticks. He'll be just short of the first down marker. Huskies are going to need about a yard on third and one now. And Sainer still, I think, was trying to get a block of Jalen, get off a block by Jalen Polk, who 
no, excuse me, it was Jack Westover, the tight end, that kept him penned in, allowed McMillan to get the corner. First third down of the game for Washington. Ball on the Michigan 17-yard line. Clock ticks under six minutes here in this first quarter. Michigan defense looking for a big stop to get off the field. Bunch set to the right. And they'll turn and give to Johnson, who's got plenty for the first down. Brought down just shy of the 10-yard line. First down, Huskies. That was Johnson's first play since the, his first play of the game. He had been on the sideline jogging, wondering if maybe he will be very limited in this game, only coming in certain high-pressure scenarios. Josiah Stewart made the tackle for the Wolverines. First down and goal now for Washington. Ball at the 10. He'll turn and give to Johnson again, breaking a tackle, but he's wrapped up and dropped. Junior Colson, Josh Wallace was in pursuit as well. No gain on the carry. And Washington already down to the 10 yard line, but I think this is very encouraging for Michigan fans. Uh, this is the opening game script for Washington, and they've had to earn every single yard on this drive. The Michigan defense is playing very tough up front. Uh, Washington's had a few 10 plus yard plays. Maybe some runs broke for Johnson, but Washington having to work here. Wholesale change for Michigan up front. Penix in the shotgun. And it's a give on the end around. Polk with it, looking for space, not much there. Two, maybe three for Jalen Polk. And they really like to get these receivers involved, William, in any way they can. We've seen a couple of end of rounds receivers getting the ball in motion on this drive. Well, when Dylan Johnson is the only running back over 200 yards rushing this season, um, you have to imagine the rushing production comes from somewhere else. And interesting call there to run that end around to the short side of the field. Not a lot of room for Polk to make up. And it's a third down and long, the first one of the day for the Washington offense. You have to wonder if they have two plays on this drive. 4-10 to go in the quarter. Michigan up 7-0. Defense looking for a big stop. Third and goal from the eight, and Washington needs a timeout. Second of this drive, and it's only the opening series for the Huskies. They've only got one more for the half. Like you've mentioned, think of opening plays of Michigan bowl games past, opening drives. They've let teams like Georgia just take the ball all the way down the field. Seeing this and seeing against an offense as potent as the Washington Huskies are, it's very encouraging from the defensive perspective. Definitely, and um, just surprising on this Washington drive, I mentioned execution. Two timeouts burned already by the Huskies. Um, and some interesting play calls by Ryan Grubb, who's gotten buzzed for head coaching jobs and the Alabama offensive coordinator job. But Washington, like I said, is just having to work very hard for every single yard. They're going to have to work hard here. And I mentioned possibly having two plays left on the drive. Two plays left in this series being third down, uh, maybe gain a few yards on this play and try and go for it on fourth down. I, I don't know if the Washington defense will be able to count on stops against the Michigan offense, considering how that first drive went, how easy it was outside of the one negative play um, for Michigan to, to move the ball down the field almost effortlessly. And Kendall, do you think that is a consideration that's going through the minds of this coaching staff for Washington? I mean, Michigan was like a hot knife through butter on that first possession in Washington has made their way down the field here, but now set up with third and eight. A lot of football left to be played, but. I mean, I absolutely think it is a consideration. Both teams kind of infamously had special teams troubles. You don't want it to come down to that. Well, I don't think it'll be as egregious for either team. I mean, your best player on the field is your quarterback. You are the, have your best shot when the ball is in his hand. And the way that your defense responded to the Michigan Wolverines opening drive is concerning. It was, you know, they were firing on all cylinders. They had passing options open. They were running the ball down their throats. I, I think if you're confident in your offense here, you're going to go for it. But they have struggled so far in this compressed space. Grady Gross, the kicker for Washington, is 16 for 20 on the season. Perfect inside of 30 yards on the year, which would what the, is what the kick would be, assuming there's no long sack. It's an eight-yard no-man's land for Washington before they get into the black paint, which is the Michigan end zone. 
And both these teams chomping at the bit to get up back out onto the field. 30 seconds left in the media timeout. And uh, a rarity for both the offense and the defense to almost be ready to go. Washington's huddling, but they, I mean, they have no reason not to. They don't want to show the formation for too long in Michigan. And Washington staring right into that Michigan band, the Michigan student section. The defense trying to get them involved here early. As we approach the conclusion of the media timeout, and these players are ready to roll. Washington set up with a shotgun look for Penix. He's got Johnson to his right. They motion Polk from right to left. Penix heads under center to make a check with his O-line. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. It's Odunze, the lone man to the right, guarded by Will Johnson. Penix looking, steps up in the pocket, throwing for Odunze, and it's incomplete. Really sticky coverage by Michigan on almost every receiver. Mike Sanders still on the outside on Polk. Didn't allow an inch. Johnson over the middle against Adunze, who is, for my money, the best overall wide receiver in the country. Production, talent, all that. Um, and I think he's tougher than Marvin Harrison in some regards, given his stature in this Washington offense. Great stand by Michigan. Another thing is in the red zone offense, it's harder for those Washington receivers to create mismatches. I mean, you're, they're still very fast, but your defender doesn't have to go very far. Jaden Green, the long snapper for the Huskies. Kick is up, and it is good from Grady Gross. Jack McAllister, the punter, is the holder for Washington. And for Michigan, we saw their kick unit struggle a little bit against Alabama on the extra point from the second touchdown of the game. It was a low snap from William Wagner, who has been otherwise perfect all season as the long snapper for the Wolverines. And then a missed kick from Turner from just under 50 yards out late in that game. Michigan obviously able to overcome those special teams mistakes to bring home the victory, but something to keep an eye on here is, Kendall, you mentioned that earlier. Michigan muffed two punts against Alabama, one that nearly cost them the game as they, it was down inside the one when Jake Thaw fell on it, and then another punt early in the game off by Samaj Morgan, which led to an Alabama score. Washington against Texas in the Sugar Bowl muffed a punt of their own, which led to a Texas score. So you have to imagine that's something that was heavily emphasized uh, through the week of practice. Michigan fans booing highlights of Ezekiel Elliott running through the Oregon defense uh, the last time a team from north of the Mason-Dixon line won the national title. It was Ohio State in 2015. Michigan looking to do something unprecedented, uh, unprecedented both in that regard and, as we mentioned earlier, their, their true talent composite being so much lower than any other national title winner. It's just a testament to the development um, by the Michigan program under this kind of second phase of Jim Harbaugh. Um, first phase maybe stretching from 2015 to 2020, now 21 to 23 into 24, I guess. Uh, but this is the, the culmination of the 23 season. And Michigan earlier, stepped it up. Earlier we saw the NASA crew, obviously we're here in Space City, here in Houston, get honored. So we wanted to look into some of the space feats from each of these schools. And both of them has, have put a man on the moon, Richard Gordon on the Apollo 12 crew, and James Irwin from the University of Michigan on Apollo 15 have both set foot on the moon. Interesting stuff here as we are in Space City, NASA's command center. One SNL Saturday Night Live alum for each as well. Gilda Radner, University of Liggett School graduate. Gilda. And Pat Sweeney, or excuse me, Julia Sweeney, who played Pat on SNL. Radner, obviously a Michigan alum, but like you said, Michigan, a University of Liggett School alum, both William and I's alma mater, and not only a Liggett alum and a Michigan alum, but also a WCBN alum. Gilda Radner was the weather girl for WCBN back during her college days at the University of Michigan. So some fun stuff to learn about, hear about, as we're good to go now through the media timeout, just about. Brady Gross ready to boot it away for the Huskies. 7-3 following 
the field goal. Michigan defense got a stand in the red zone, forcing the Huskies to settle for three. Samaj Morgan, the return man for the Wolverines, the talented freshman, has been a nuisance to opposing teams all year. Kick is away, and Morgan will field it at about the two in the end zone. Morgan looking for space. He's got none. Dropped it and to the 14-yard line. Back-to-back -back plays like that. We don't really see Michigan return kicks. In college, you can fair catch it anywhere within the 25-yard line and bring it out to the 25. I don't know why Michigan in this game has chosen to do that, given the special team's mistakes. Um, it's just interesting. And, and now Michigan starting backed up 10 yards again. I mean, it didn't really matter. Maybe you're playing the long game and just trying to chew more clock on a longer drive. Who knows? Morgan had an 87-yard punt return against Iowa that set up a Blake Corum touchdown. He's been electric at times in the return game, but obviously the big mistake against the Tide. I form set for Michigan. Power football from Jim Harbaugh. McCarthy turns, gives to Corum. Corum looking for some space. And he'll be stopped after a pickup of about four. So. And again, um, like Kendall said, Washington struggling with their arm tackles. And, and Blake Corum easily breaking through uh, Latula, Latuli Nasanoa, uh, the big defensive tackle for, er, for Washington, unable to take him down. Corum shrugs, shrugs him off, excuse me. 7-3, 3.20 to go in the quarter. Second and seven for the Wolverines. Ball on their own 17. Pistol set for McCarthy and the Wolverines. They'll run a play action here. McCarthy looking deep for Wilson. He's got him! Cross the 50 and brought down inside of Washington territory at the 45. J.J. McCarthy with a dime to Roman Wilson. And that's a big strike from the Wolverines. And Roman Wilson running that post route across the field kind of angles it up towards the boundary instead of running it so flat just to get past Hampton, the safety, and what a ball by McCarthy delivering that on a rope to Roman. Put that right over the top of the safety, Hampton, and good protection from the offensive line there. Michigan goes empty. They motion out Corum all the way to the right. Morgan in the slot to the right. Three receivers to the left. J.J. looking for Morgan, and it's incomplete. Nearly picked off there. As it went off the hands of Samaj Morgan, J.J. just put it a little bit off the body of number 82. And McCarthy, let's look at the replay. Feet look a little wonky there. I, I don't know. We've seen some accuracy mistakes from J.J. on the back half of this season that have really just been head scratchers. And that nearly cost him there. Elijah Jackson, the corner for Washington, dove out for that one and had a chance to pick it off on the tip. Michigan goes jumbo here. Edwards the pistol back. And they'll turn and give to Edwards. Edwards with more space. Edwards, 30, 20, not going to catch him. Touchdown, Wolverines. Donovan Edwards with his second of the game. And it's another long one. Edwards coming in, six offensive linemen. Uh, the package for Michigan, they've been running a lot, running that a lot this season. Jones, who's starting at right tackle in this game, moved to the left side, kind of a, in a tight end position, offset from the line of scrimmage. And Edwards, beautiful cutback to get to the right side. We've kind of been waiting for him to make plays in big games as we've had down the stretch like he did last season. Two big touchdowns in this one. Turner's kick is through. And Michigan, the offense is humming early. 14 to three Wolverines over the Huskies. And it's been all Donovan Edwards for Michigan. 46 yards there on the score. He's got a pair of 40 yard touchdowns in the first quarter. And like, uh, like Will mentioned earlier when he was talking about the Wolverines wanting to get the ball first, them getting up or at least keeping it close allows them to use their script and play their game. And rushing is such a huge part of that. We've seen them, you know, dominate on the defensive side. And they've gotten out ahead. And because of that, they're allowed to use their, you know, lethal run game. This is exactly how the Wolverines would have wanted this for these first two drives to go. And I'm not going to lie. Driving in on the bus here, I thought about it. Thinking about all the Wolverine playmakers that we've seen so far in the back half of this season. I, I was thinking to myself, Donovan Edwards still has something to give. Former five-star recruit. 
one of only three on this Michigan football team, uh, and, and really nobody talking about him in the run-up to this game. It's Quorum, it's Roman, it's JJ. Doman boots it deep, and that will be called for a touchback. And Daniel Nada, the return man for the Huskies, and Edwards obviously had that Legacy-defining game against Ohio State last season where he ripped off over 200 yards on the ground, a couple of long touchdowns, and he's on the brink of doing something great again here. 41-yard touchdown run and a 46-yarder to open the scoring for Michigan, and again, unbelievable blocking up front from that offensive line, William. Yep, but you got to make sure Penix is contained here. He can uncork the long one. Shotgun formation for the Huskies. Johnson to the right of Penix. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Penix claps his hands, receives the snap. Dropping back to pass, stepping up in the pocket, and he's going to take off. Slides down just short of the first down marker. Mason Graham dove at the ankles and tripped him up a bit, but not enough to get down. The QB for the Huskies. Almost had him. And Penix isn't known as a guy who will scramble. We did see some design runs against Texas, but Penix able to get through the middle of the line of scrimmage uh, and be quick enough to not have a defensive tackle for Michigan bring him down. Penix claps his hands, and it's a toss to Johnson. Johnson looking for space, and he's dropped for a loss. Some and they marked Penix well, way short of the stick, so I guess where he started his slide yeah, was a bit cool. further back. So it's third and four now, gain of one so on the play. Something to keep note of here is that Johnson has been in and out of this game constantly, likely due to that lingering injury. He hasn't been able to put a sustained drive together. He came up a little lingered on that play. They motion Nixon back into the backfield. Penix with a bunch set to his right. Dropping back to throw, Penix looking, he's got McMillan. McMillan is going to be stopped short. Jalen McMillan, well short of the sticks. Excellent tackle in space from Mikey Sainra still. And a converted wide receiver just did that? Are you kidding me? McMillan, who slipped a sab tackle to pick up a first down on the last drive, unable to get away from Mikey, uh, one of the longest tenured Wolverines and an impact player will have his name called in the upcoming NFL draft in a few months. And he's one of those guys that's just, Jim Harbaugh's called him a dog, a disciplined athlete with grit, a heart, one of the heartbeats of this team, and Check that's punt. a low punt. Let Morgan points it out, and it takes a real good Washington bounce. It'll be down at the 21. Samaj Morgan, this is the first punt we've seen today. Morgan still back returning punts for Michigan, at least for now. We saw them switch it up late in the Rose Bowl. It was all Morgan, even after the muff punt in the beginning, and then on the last punt of the game, it was Jake Thaw that was back to receive for Michigan. And these Washington special teams players are no Will Reichard and James Burnup. Uh, McAllister, about a 40-yard average on his punts. Burnup, I think, has him by about four more yards. And, and Gross, uh, definitely not as good as the all-time NCAA leading scorer, Reichard. Michigan a chance to get some advantage on special teams if they don't make the mistakes they did last week. Pistol look for Michigan. Corum, the pistol back. And it's a give to Corum. Blake with space. Blake Corum left side. 35, 40, 50, 40 yard line. Cut back leg. Blake Corum down to the 20 yard line. A big pickup from number two. I don't think I've seen that burst from him all season. I think this Wolverines offensive line, the two time reigning Joe Moore Award winner before this season, Washington won it, has a chip on their shoulder. Corum wasn't even touched before he got five yards ahead of the line of scrimmage. The Washington Huskies normally are giving up only 137 yards of rushing per game. In this one, they're already at, the Wolverines are already at 174. That marks the end of the first quarter, and Michigan is approaching 200 yards on the ground. J.J. McCarthy has had to do very little, had a couple of nice throws on that first drive, and then had the long one to Roman Wilson, but it has been the ground game, this offensive line, and these tailbacks for Michigan. This is Jim Harbaugh football. This is Sharon Moore football. 
pounding the rock, using the big fellas up front. As we hit the quarter break, oh boy, what a quarter for the Wolverines. 14 to three through the first 15 minutes of play here in the national championship. And I don't want to say it, but this is shaping up to be a mismatch in the national championship game. And it's really not something that we uh, are unfamiliar with. Last season, Georgia beats TCU 65 to seven. Oh, you say that's an outlier. It is, it's a big margin of defeat. But the previous season, Georgia wins the national title by 15 points. Alabama beats Ohio State in 2020, 52 to 24. LSU in 2019 with Joe Burrow, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase wins 42-25. That game really wasn't that close against Clemson. Clemson beats Alabama the season before that, 44-16. These national title games, ever since that walk-off touchdown by Tua Tungabailoa against Georgia in 2017, have not been close. And, and, and the semifinals have always been closer in the college football playoff. The, free, the first three, excuse me, four national titles were uh, within two to five points of each other. The great Clemson-Bama back yeah. and forth. But right now, it's shaping up to be uh, what we've seen the last five years, in my opinion. I mean, Washington cannot control the line of scrimmage in this game on offense or defense. And it, it was this year we had, by far, the two best semifinal games. You can argue that they're two of the best standalone semifinals, by far the best tandem of semifinal games we've had in a single season for the college football playoff under the four-team format that's obviously changing as we go into 2020 the yeah. 2024 season uh, to a 12-team playoff but Michigan has looked dominant yeah. early and they are absolutely asserting themselves here now let's not get too far ahead of ourselves if there's any team in the country that's not going to blink at an 11 point deficit in the first quarter it's this washington husky team that has three nfl receivers and a first round nfl quarterback i do want to make one final parallel before this media timeout ends that first college football playoff championship ohio state oregon where ezekiel elliott ran all over the field against a heisman trophy winning quarterback big 10 pac 12 big 10 asserted itself i think it's shaping up to be that and i know that uh Penix and these group of wide receivers are capable but man michigan coming out as we all kind of expected at the beginning of this season with a fire under their butt to, to go get this done after two straight duds in the semifinal rounds. And we saw Texas rush for about six yards of carry against Washington in that Sugar Bowl, but just didn't quite have the experience at the running back position to really take advantage. Michigan with the most experience at running back in the country doing that right now. Ball on the 20 for Michigan following the huge burst from Corum. It's a give to Corum again. Corum looking for space, dancing through tackles. Brought down after he picks up about three on the right side. And that was second and seven. One of the most successful defensive plays by Washington in this first half, and they still let up three yards. Corum, it, it takes more than one guy to bring him down in this game, uh, and Washington has to get things sorted defensively. Alfonso Tukutala made the tackle there for the Huskies. Second and seven ball on the 17. 14.30 to go here in the second quarter. Mullings in the game at running back. He's to the right of McCarthy. Trips to the right. Lone receiver is Johnson to the left. It's a give. Mullings fighting forward, and he's going to be stood up around the 15, 14 yard line is where they're going to mark it. Got through the line of scrimmage real easily. Uh, looked like between the B gap. And third and four now, third and manageable. It's where you want to be as an offense. Cam Fabiculan and made the hit for the Huskies. A couple of other Washington defenders in there as well. Third and four now for Michigan. Our first real third down of the game. Michigan going to set up a trio of receivers to the right and McCarthy's gonna signal for a timeout. 13.35 to go, Wolverines on top, 14-3. Third and four, ball from the 14. Michigan looking to add on. I mean, what is what else is there to say at this point? Michigan on offense. Um, We've had a lot of breaks to, <laughs> to burn through early. They, they've looked unstoppable. Uh, and it's coming from multiple players. 
I think Kalel Mullings has run really well today. He just doesn't have a touchdown yet. Um, and I think one thing that is interesting is that J.J. McCarthy, we talked about it in the Rose Bowl before that final drive that tied the game and led it to overtime. But we wanted to see if he could do it in one drive. And what I think is good for Michigan here, uh, we know that he can do that now. What we haven't seen yet this season is a multiple score comeback. And that was what I think Michigan fans were really worried about in this game. If Washington was able to jump out, you know, throw for two touchdowns like they did against, or, uh, like Michigan had happened against TCU. But that didn't happen. Uh, it's kind of unlikely to happen at this point with the way Michigan's playing offense. And I think the Wolverines are just very comfortable to play the brand of football that they have all season long, which is playing with a lead, playing out in front, running the football, burning clock, uh, and getting out of this game before it really gets started. And you talked about Michigan, even if they won the toss, that you think they should have or would have wanted the football first. And that definitely looks like it ended up in the Wolverines' favor. Michigan going down, getting on the board early. No chance for Washington to really get out to a quick lead and force Michigan to play from behind and play catch up. And the game script, Kendall and William, I'd say has definitely been in Michigan's favor. I mean, they've been in control the whole time and have been playing their style of football, forcing Washington to adjust to them. Absolutely, like we mentioned, the Huskies are going to throw no matter what, but rushing is such an important part of this Wolverine offense. The fact that they've been able to do it and do it so successfully really bodes well for them, especially coming in here with a lead. And I'm interested to see what Washington will run on their next drive. Um, Alabama really outside of the last two minutes of the first half didn't throw deep, uh, which is all they did all season outside of the running game. But... Michigan forced them to throw short. Jalen Miller isn't a, as effective in that phase of the game, and I think it's the same deal with Penix. And they didn't take that many shots downfield, did Alabama. Really only one or two. Uh, nothing over 30 yards for the tide through the air. Obviously a different animal in Washington, but the same principle. Michigan set up with third and four. Ball on the 19. Wolverines got to get, or excuse me, ball on the 14-yard line. Michigan has to get to the 10 to move the chains and set up goal to go. Blake Corum, the tailback to the left of McCarthy. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. J.J. brings Johnson in motion, drops back to throw. J.J. looking for Cornelius, and he's well covered there. Jabbar Muhammad, the top cornerback for this Husky defense was stuck right to his hip. Really sticky defense by Washington once again. Um, obviously Michigan had that big play to Roman Wilson on the last drive, but Washington has looked good in coverage outside of that rep. And on two gotta have it throws, J.J. McCarthy has uh, been forced to make a really tight throw. Field goal try set up for Turner, it's a 32-yarder, and it's good. So, so far, kicking for Michigan has not been an issue, as there's an injured Wolverine on the field that looks like Trente Jones. He's, he's getting up fine. He's pulled up, and it looks like he'll be okay. May have just had his, the wind knocked out of him. So Michigan extends their lead to 14, 13, 28 to go in the half. It's been all Wolverines through the first 16 and a half minutes here. And, and before this game, I talked a lot about Washington being able to handle Michigan up front. Um, they are the reigning Joe Moore Award winning offensive line. Their defensive line played well enough against Texas. But Michigan, I think, has bullied and, and controlled the line of scrimmage against every team they played this season. And I didn't see why it would change against a team in Washington that I thought had an inferior uh, trench group than Alabama or Ohio State. And Ohio State did have a successful stretch, as did Alabama, uh, in controlling the line of scrimmage. But eventually Michigan just overpowers teams. And Washington just doesn't have the size or talent, especially on the defensive line, to really match up. And that's what wins these games in a lot of cases. They talk about defense winning championships. 
and, and, and that is true, but that really starts at controlling the line of scrimmage, controlling the run game, um, and on offense, getting it done up front as well. And we've seen a return to a more physical kind of football this season in the NFL and in college um, compared to what we saw a few years ago. Joe Burrow winning the national title, Bryce Young, uh, Tua Tagovailoa. Aired out teams have kind of struggled. Washington has been the exception this season. Husky set up on the 25 following the touchback from Tommy Doman on the kickoff. Penix with Johnson to his right. Trips receivers to the right. And they'll throw to Odunze, who's got just enough to move the chains. Odunze fell forward for the first down. And really, I think Michigan uh, don't come up in the, in the pass game. Do not allow Washington to lull you into a sense of short throws and the running game. Then they'll bomb you deep. Uh, be okay with allowing five, eight-yard completions and let them beat you on the long drive instead of a long play. That's what we saw on the first drive from Washington. Defense clamped up in the red zone. First and ten for the Huskies. They bring Odunze in motion. Penix stepping up to throw. He's got Polk at midfield. A dart from the left hand of Michael Penix. And that will, again, move the chains. Washington with the ball at midfield. McMillan and Polk running stop routes. Wallace, a tough play to make there uh, against the receiver who's going to the NFL. Penix turns, gives to Johnson. Johnson looking for some running room, and he doesn't find much of it. One, maybe two. That'll bring up second and long for the Huskies. And as much as Washington likes to throw the ball, at a certain point you do just have to run the football um, to get easy gains on first down. We saw against Texas that they had trouble doing that to seal the game, had a fumble in the, in the fourth quarter as well. But you got to play complimentary football to win at this level. Second and nine now for Washington. They bring the tight end, Devin Culp, in line. Two receivers to the left, and there's a flag thrown. Michigan thinks that's on Washington, potentially a procedural penalty. Our officials will huddle up here. And again, you can't just keep shooting yourself in the foot. Already a second and nine. Michigan benefiting from opposing center's issues. And penalties is one place where Washington has been exceedingly weak this season. They give, they're give they averaging 71 penalty yards per game. On the opposite side, Wolverines only with 26. Michigan, the least penalized team in the country, only 2.88 per game. It's winning football. Parker Brails for the center, illegal snap. Husky shift, Nixon to the left of Penix in the backfield. Two receivers on each side. 14 yards to go, Penix heaves downfield and incomplete, was looking for Polk. And I, I think if Penix had set feet, he could get that throw to Polk. Um, but being on the run outside of the pocket, Chris Jenkins in hot pursuit. The ball floats a little bit, enough for the safety Sab to get over, as well as Josh Wallace to recover. And, and both those players can make a play on the football. Third down and very long for Washington now. Third and 14, 11, 18 to go in the half. Ball on the 46 for Washington. Got to get to the Michigan 40. Empty set for the Huskies. Penix with three to his left, two to his right. And there's another penalty. Michigan pointing at Washington again. I think Chris Jenkins jumped because he saw movement on the Washington front. And it's on Washington. And like we just mentioned, this is an area where Washington has struggled. And maybe it hasn't been so obvious this season. But when you're playing a team like the Wolverines that just don't commit penalties like that, it's going to become glaringly obvious, especially in huge situations like this one. Not only does Michigan not commit penalties, they just don't make mistakes, period. Huskies motion everybody out. Empty again for Penix. Three receivers to the left, two to the right. The tailback Nixon all the way out to the left. Penix looking downfield, and he's got his man. That's McMillan, but he's well short of the line to gain. Good open field tackle this time by Sabin. We mentioned mistakes. 
Michigan won in Pasadena without their fastball. That's what great teams do, and I think that's why they lost to TCU in the Fiesta Bowl two seasons ago. Washington, I don't think, is a team that can afford to make these kind of mistakes with their talent disparity. And fourth and seven, Kalen DeBoer is keeping his offense on the field. They picked up 12 on the pass to McMillan. And Penix clearly knew he had two chances at this if they got enough on the first play. A lot of faith in his quarterback does this head coach, Kalen DeBoer. Penix dropping back to throw. Pressure coming, looking. He's got Adunze, and he missed it. Adunze was wide open. A blown Man. coverage from Michigan, which we just talked about Michigan making mistakes. You do not see that often. Odunze had to turn to his back shoulder and got tripped up by his own feet. Michigan was showing man coverage on that play. Slow rotation by Ron Moore. I think they dropped back into zone, and Moore went all the way to the deep middle of the field without checking where Odunze was going. Washington had the play to beat that fake coverage, and Penix pressured on the inside up the middle. That's what we talk about uh, against good quarterbacks like Penix. You want to get hands in his face delivers the throw over the head of Adunze, and Penix, not a guy to make throwing errors like that, can't connect on the deep ball. That's what kills an offense like Washington. Against Arizona State, the Huskies really had problems. That was a game that ended 15 to seven. Washington having the win on a pick six late was the only game this season Washington scored under 20 points. Uh, and, and it's one of those times where if you don't connect on the deep ball and you're an offense like the Huskies where you're chucking it, almost every other play. Uh, it's feast or famine. This time it's famine for Washington. That was a walk-in touchdown. Penix misses the throw. He didn't miss anything against Texas. I mean, that was one of the greatest quarterback performances I've ever seen. 450 yards against the Longhorns. Hitting on every throw, perfect, just where it needed to be. But the pressure for Michigan has affected Michael Penix Jr. in this game enough to prevent a touchdown on that play. And a lot of people made comparisons between Michigan and Texas's defensive lines. Texas also with two unbelievable interior defensive linemen. But they're more run-stuffing specialists than pass rushers. And while Michigan's interior defensive line combination of Jenkins, uh, Grant, Grant, Grant and Graham, good. good in there as well. No Rayshon Benny today, but they're much more adept as pass rushers as well. Uh, than sweat for Texas, and so we've really seen that today, that interior pressure pushing the pocket like we saw against Alabama. Wolverines, I believe, coming into this is the second best pass rush defense um, in the nation. Like you will mention, I mean, that was just, you know, the play was perfect. It was going to beat the Wolverines secondary. Penix just had people coming in. They were coming into his face, and he, you know, made a rare blunder for him. And I, I think Michigan's edge rushers also, um, with the depth, they got eight rushers that can play. Um, excuse me, four edge rushers, eight total defensive linemen, two full rotations. And that, that has been what's given Michigan's opponents so much trouble this season that when you think you're wearing them down up front, they can just shift like line change like they do in hockey. Four new guys in there. Uh, and I don't know if Texas has that exactly. They have Murphy and Sweat, but on the outside, they didn't have enough that could pressure Penix. Uh, a lot of the rushers would just rush up field. Penix would step up, be able to throw, um, and, and he bombed the Longhorns. They also don't have playmakers on the back end. I, I don't think that Michigan's secondary players are the best in the country. Uh, I think they are spectacular players for the Big Ten this season, given that the quarterback situations around the league aren't, aren't but great. Outside of Alabama, is there anyone much better? I mean, yeah. On the back end in, in hole. Penn Georgia's, State grades Georgia's well. Got some guys. Penn State, yep. Michigan makes plays, though. That's the difference. You, you, you have to make plays on defense, too. Michigan going to take over at the 47 yard line. Best field position of the day for the Wolverines. Scoring on all three of their drives so far. Pistol set for McCarthy. They bring Wilson left to right. It's a give. Corum tripped up at the line of scrimmage, fell forward for maybe a yard. Going to be second and long for Michigan. No gain on the carry. Washington got kicked in the teeth, uh, I, I think, on defense. After that big last Corum gashing run, they, they've shored up on the interior. Um, three runs for Michigan that, that were tough sledding. 
I think they will have to mix some things up, the Wolverines on offense, to continue uh, moving as they have throughout this first half. Corum again in the pistol behind McCarthy. They bring Morgan in motion left to right. And it's a play action pass. JJ, good protection. Rolls out to the right. Going to throw for Loveland as tight ends. Got it, does he? I think he bobbled it out of bounds. And they're going to say it's incomplete. Loveland got his hands on it, got the feet down, just couldn't complete it to the ground. Loveland has been one of McCarthy's more reliable pass catchers this season, and the Washington defense giving up about 6.6 .6 yards per play. Not surprising that they should maybe turn to Loveland or Barner for those short middle-of-the-road passes. Now, unfortunately, you've got 3-10. and 10. Really good play from the safety, Dominique Hampton, to knock it free there. It was a good throw from McCarthy. Third and ten for the Wolverines. J.J. drops back the pass, looking. He's going to overthrow Cornelius Johnson. Elijah Jackson on the coverage for the Huskies, and Michigan going to send out Tommy Doman for the first time today. Washington still playing good coverage, but that accuracy rearing its ugly head for McCarthy, and I think he can make those big-time throws, but the consistency ha has yet to be shown in this back half of the season as the competition has increased. Um, you talk about McCarthy's chances for the NFL, some rumblings that will come back to Michigan. Scouts are not going to like those kind of throws on tape. Doman to boot it away to the former Wolverine, Giles Jackson, and it's a good one Ooh. from Doman. Doman oh. just sails it a bit long. That'll be a touchback. Tommy Doman did not punt the ball particularly well against Alabama. Was flat out outdueled by James Burnett. But in the last couple regular season games of the season for Michigan, he was absolutely on fire. William, you were really familiar with what he was doing. I mean, punting it as well as anyone in the country down the stretch. Yeah, he had five games before last week of uh, five straight games of a punt inside the 12-yard line, this time not getting the coffin corner. Um, and instead, a, few, a, a rare touchback for Doman. It's either his third or fourth of the year. Doesn't do it often. The Michigan punt coverage unit has been spectacular, as their kick coverage has been as well. You'd like to, to pin Penix back deeper than the 20-yard line, but uh, with how the Michigan defense is playing, just happy to get a punt away um, and, and flip the field. Talk about real Big Ten football, worried about a, a punt turning the football over. Um, but Washington on this drive, I, I think, can, can do some things a little differently. They, they know now that there's a chance they can they can hit the deep ball, um, but they do have to establish that rhythm first. Maybe it's the first one and then the dam breaks. Uh, but Michigan also don't play complicated football. Um, play winning football. Keep the ball in front of you. Let the long drive, as I said before, beat you rather than the long play. It's 17-3. to three. You can sit back uh, and, and make Penix pick you apart instead of letting him bomb you deep. I think that the coverage breakdown on that last play to Adunze was troubling. That, that Rod Moore showed man coverage, was unable to get back and, and cover his assignment. And I, I guess the theme, and it really has been all season, you see Michigan do some misdirection in the first half, um, some different kind of blitz packages in, in the first two periods, and then it seems like they come out almost every game without fail in the second half and just say, you know what, we're better than you. We're going to run the football, and we're just going to play straight-up defense and beat you because we're better than you. And this is a team that's been three, four years in the making. You talk about that 2020 team that went two and four. Big losses to Wisconsin, to Penn State, Michigan State at home during the COVID year. Then you have the 2021 team that brought Michigan back, the first win against Ohio State, but got shelled in the playoffs by Georgia. I mean, they got they got a wake-up call against a them. A Joe Moore award-winning offensive line getting torn to shreds. Really good Georgia team, and obviously TCU last year now, they've learned their lessons and really grown from those experiences. First and 10, 2.29 to go in the quarter. Penix receives the snap. Dropping back to throw, pressure in his face. Kenneth Grant's got it for a sack! Oh my goodness! KG Kenny Grant 
The bull rush up front. He, oh my gosh. I mean, he just manhandled, absolutely manhandled the left guard, Nate, Nate Kalepo. Oh. Kalepo, 327, still getting bullied. I mean, Kenny Grant's a, a, a 340, 330 pounder. That's a true sophomore. <laughs> oh my gosh. You don't see 6'6", 327 get moved like that often. He's a special player. Penix dropping back. More pressure coming. Has to get rid of it, and it is I think incomplete. That's a trap. That bounced into McMillan's hands. Penix again pressured. This time both interior rushers for Michigan, Graham and Grant, two Sunday players. Every coach this season has talked about those guys possibly going in the first round, and you have to say in the 25 draft. Because they're not, they're not going They're anywhere. not eligible. But, I, I mean, I thought when, when Grant moved the offensive lineman back into the face of Penix, I thought it was Parker Brailsford, who's the center, who's 275 pounds, but it was the guard, who's one of their bigger offensive linemen. He's the heaviest guy on the offensive line. Michigan with their pass rush set in. Josiah Stewart and Derek Moore. In on the edges, set third and 21 from their own nine. Penix just dumps it off to Dylan Johnson. Johnson gonna, gonna be wrapped up by four or five Wolverines. Gonna be about seven yards to go. Fourth and seven now as Jack McAllister and the punt team will come on for Washington. How about that from the Michigan defensive front? I mean, I think that's exactly what the Wolverines want. They brought pressure on that first one, the Kenny Grant sack. Penix just froze. He you know, did not have an answer to it. On the second one, he managed to get it out, but throw was low. And then there, like we'll mention, just not letting them kill you on the deep ball. Sure, he got off a pretty long pass, but it was still not going to be enough, and it worked out well for the Wolverines. McAllister boots it deep, end over end Short kick. Run. Bounces at the 40 and takes a Michigan bounce toward the sideline, out of bounds at the 32. And I remember back before the spring game, when Zach Linfield and I called the spring game, there was a lot of buzz from the coaching staff about Kenneth Grant and that he was one of the first draft picks in that game in his development from his freshman into toward the sophomore season. And he has absolutely lived up to every bit of that hype and more. These are special players on the interior defensive line for Michigan. It seems like the Michigan defensive line can swarm on any play. You saw that against Alabama. Just saw it there. First and 10 from the 33 for Michigan. Two receivers to the right. They bring Morris in motion. Back out to the left. It's a give to Corum. Corum with more space. Picks up seven or eight there. Blake Corum continuing to pound the football on the ground. And uh, he came in in a big belt buckle and a cowboy hat to this game. He had work to do. He knew it. And that's what he knew when he came back to Ann Arbor. He, he recently shared that Coach Harbaugh suggested that he go to the NFL, chose to come back to school, um, and it might pay off with a national championship ring. 7.15 to go in the half. Michigan 14. up 14, 17-3. Two yards to go, and it's Alex Orgy at quarterback. Orgy keeps it himself. Alex Orgy, good block on the perimeter, past the 50 toward the 45 of Washington. Alex Orgy on that special package with the read option. We've seen him in the game against Ohio State, then saw him against Alabama. Didn't do much against the Tide, but... Well, we had finally, a couple of impact plays against Ohio State. Finally saw that he might be able to throw. Everything was covered, and he just had to run out of bounds. Um, but now Michigan just saying, you know, you're a really talented runner. Let's give you the football, let you work. Chunk play for Michigan, and that is the fourth ball carrier for Michigan that has registered a chunk play like that. Orgy still in at quarterback. They switch to a split backfield. Edwards. And Mullings, Orgy keeps again, and he's going to be swallowed up that time. Huskies were ready for him. And you see Orgy come in the game. McCarthy can run the ball, but we haven't really seen it all season, only as a necessity. Orgy is really coming into the game as a substitute for J.J. Uh, as an extra blocker in the run game, which we've seen all season. Michigan might not need an extra blocker in the run game to rip off chunk plays. J.J. checks back in as the signal, signal caller for Michigan. Pistol set. Give Corum 
Bounces it to the right, and he's got nowhere to go. And it looks like there may be an injured Husky on the play. We'll wait to check the number. It was the player that made the tackle. I believe that's Jabbar Muhammad, the top corner on this Husky defense as he's still down on the turf, clearly in some pain. Yep, it's Muhammad, Muhammad the uh, right cornerback for Washington. 19 pass breakups this season, 44 tackles. And he's a guy who was an all Pac-12 second teamer and you make like 19 pass defenses, 44 tackles. That's a guy who is thrown at a lot. Um, but he he's a playmaker, excuse me, on this Washington defense transfer from Oklahoma State. You think about who would come up to replace him. Thaddeus Dixon, a senior, uh, a transfer from Long Beach Community College, as well as Javion Green, a junior from Houston, uh, another guy who could take Muhammad snaps and everybody from Washington on a knee as Muhammad sitting up now with four Washington excuse me five Washington athletic staff around him obviously something you hate to see any player goes down on the turf like this and it's taken this long to get helped it'll be third and seven for Michigan as Muhammad's helped to his feet Muhammad also a, a, a Texan himself from DeSoto in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Um, not necessarily a homecoming, but he is in his home state. Muhammad able to, for the most part, walk off under his own power. And has his helmet off. We'll give you an update if we get one on his status as he'll head into the medical tent, not going to the locker room yet. We another third down and long for Michigan. Two runs get bottled up after uh, two nice gainers on, on two plays, the first two plays of the drive. And this game is kind of settled in, um, I think. Michigan able to control the Washington offense so far, not making many mistakes. One mistake that they did make, fortunately for them, Washington matched it with one of their own. Penix unable to connect with the Dunes and a walk-in touchdown. And... Similarly to the Alabama game, early scores, um, but then the game kind of just gets a flow. Punts, teams moving throughout the middle of the field, not into scoring territory. And this game was set at a total around 55, I think is where it ended at. Michigan ended as close to a six point favorite. After opening as a six and a half point favorite, that was bet down to four and a half, was moved up before kick. Uh, to just short of a touchdown. And I, I don't think many people expected the Washington offense to be as punchless as it has been in the first half. And that's a credit to this Michigan defense. Both squads back on the field after the injury timeout. We've seen these teams on the field early before the media timeouts even officially end. McCarthy in the shotgun, Edwards, the running back to his left. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Huskies show pressure, then drop off. Clock ticking toward 5.30 to go in the half, third and seven. Ball on the 43-yard line of Washington. Michigan gives Edwards, fighting forward, and he's not going to have enough for the first down, but makes a decision now for Jim Harbaugh. J.J. looking toward the sideline. This is an interesting decision, but I, I think Michigan might just play field position. Trevor Keegan really wanting to stay on the field and go for this, but Tommy Doman and the punt unit are ushered onto the field. And if you can get this ball inside the five, that's a big win for Michigan instead of, you know, missing a fourth down conversion, giving the ball to Washington 10 yards short of the midfield line, uh, and that's go time for them. Do not want to give up a momentum play timeout I think is called by Romans Michigan punt there is at the goal line <laughs> nearly as good as you can put it I think you put it within the one yard line it bounces into the end zone 
Timeout Michigan, I believe. So both teams with only one timeout remaining. 4.46 to go in the half. Fourth and three for the Wolverines. And we'll see if they bring the punt unit back out. Jim Harbaugh's tended to be pretty aggressive in these situations and for good reason. Michigan, one of the best in the country at converting on fourth down. It's been a fun experience for us so far in Houston. Again, you're listening to WCBN Sports, live coverage of Michigan football. If you're joining us on YouTube, thank you. If you're tuning in over FM in Washtenaw County, thank you. You're tuned into WCBN 88.3 FM Ann Arbor. We're gonna go for it. Proud to be representing 88.3. WCBN FM Ann Arbor here in Houston. Fourth and three. Michigan has the offense on the field. Corum, the tailback. JJ going to throw for it. Wants, and he doesn't have him. Wanted Roman Wilson. Good coverage, and that's a big stop for this Husky defense to give Penix and company a short field. And I, I'm a person who really likes uh, coaches being aggressive on fourth down, but that's a spot I think you punt and you do play the field position game. Penix now having the ball at the 39 yard line, down only two touchdowns. Washington has a chance with 4.43 left in the second quarter to win these middle eight minutes. They're the, are, are the most important segment of a football game. First, or last four, excuse me, the first half, first four, the second half, where Washington will receive the second half kickoff. I don't know. Ball on the 39 yard line for Penix. He's in the shotgun. Bring the tight end in motion. Johnson, the running back, they give it to him. Johnson with space, good carry there. Pickup of about six. And, and Washington's done well running the football on first down in this game so far. Um, they've had a success rate on a majority of these first down runs. Some have gotten stacked up, but Johnson, even though inhibited by injury, has, has run well on first down today. Johnson motioned all the way out to the left. Empty set for Penix. Polk in the slot, Westover the tight end on the left side. He finds Jack Westover, Westover with some space. He's got the first down to the 45 on the opposite side of midfield. And Westover, a six year walk on tight end, started in 2018. He only played two games in high school, got hurt, broke his collarbone at the start of his senior year. Penix gives Johnson, not much there. Picked and, up two, maybe three. And so for Westover, a contributor, along with Devin Colt, the other tight end, uh, had played basketball since seventh grade up until his senior year. But at the end of his junior year, he, quote, fell out of love uh, with playing basketball, went to, play, went to try football, like I said, got hurt, but eventually makes it here to the biggest stage in college football. Nixon, the running back to the left of Penix. They motion him out to the right. Penix looks that way, gonna fire over the middle to Odunze. Rome Odunze gonna be wrapped up by a trio of Wolverines, but it's enough to move the chains. First down Huskies. A number of free rushers for Michigan on that play, but it was by design. A tunnel screen for Washington. Lineman up front, block and release. Odunze comes over the middle, another design touch for him. Just past Malik Neighbors from LSU to lead the nation in receiving yards. Under three minutes to go in the half. First and 10 for the Huskies. Ball on the Michigan 34. Penix gonna throw, got Westover again, wide open. Junior Colson hits him at the 29, excuse me, the 24 yard line. And Washington, again, moves the chains. This is what I said, you don't wanna give them a ball with a short, give them the ball with a short field. Um, they've shown that they can move the ball in the short passing game and they've done so. First and 10 for Washington. 2.20 to go. Penix going to throw for it again and off target. Was looking for Polk. And an RPO action on that play. Nixon could have gotten the ball, was stacked up. Good read by Penix not to hand it off, but Polk defended well. So second and 10 now. 2.17 with the clock stopped. Michigan. 
making some substitutions on that defensive front. Again, no Rayshon Benny. Got hurt in that Alabama game. Empty set for the Huskies. Four receivers to the left. Adunze, the lone man to the right. Will Johnson, or excuse me, that's Josh Wallace marked up on him. Blitz. Michigan bringing pressure. They're going for Adunze, and Adunze stumbled out of his break. Huskies want a penalty. There's nothing there. That was just Roma Dunze losing his footing a little bit. Josh Wallace was marked up one-on-one -on -one at against him, and Washington clearly wanted to just let their guy go try to make a play. Not seeing any protests from the actual Huskies on the field there, just from the fans wanting a penalty call. And, and Barrett came out screaming on another linebacker blitz. Penix, that fade route was the design play, but fortunate to get the ball out. Third and 10. Trips to the right for Washington. Nicks in the tailback to the left of Penix. He'll drop back to throw. Pressure coming. And he That's a flag. Yep. Incomplete, but that's going to be a penalty intended for McMillan. Sainer still had his hands all over him. I mean, clear as day to me from the opposite side of the field. Wasn't a great throw from Penix, but McMillan unable to make an adjustment due to Sainer still. And um, maybe retribution for Washington fans. A little bit of a sell job from McMillan. Ball is overthrown, but Sainer still had enough of a hand on him for a flag to be drawn. He's got to know better. Rare mistake you see from Mike Sainer still, the nickel corner for Michigan, one of the best in the country, and a veteran presence on this Michigan roster. First and goal from the eight for the Huskies. 2.08 to go in the half. Motion everyone over to the right side. Odunze, one-on-one -on -one with Will Johnson. Split out to the right. It's a give. Johnson looking for space, and he breaks a tackle, brought down at the five. Makari Page, the safety, came up to make the hit. And I'd mark two mistakes on this drive, one for Michigan to go for it on the other end, uh, and then that Sainer still pass interference call. I still think that not flipping the field will loom large against the Wolverines to only go up to halftime um, with a one-score lead instead of a two-score lead. And you don't know what Washington does if they're pinned deep, but tough decision. Penix under center. It's a toss. Johnson. And he stops down. short. That brings up third down now. Makari Page again in there to make a play. There looked like there was a crease for Johnson and Page. Great stick. Just a great stick. They had a, a, a Dunze coming on the other end on a fake end around to offset the toss to Johnson. Nobody on the Wolverine defense was fooled. Page comes up, makes a great hit. So there will be a Michigan timeout with a minute 31 to go, third and five. And you want to stop, to the, stop the clock if you're Michigan, try and get the ball back uh, with the clock stopping on first downs inside two minutes to put possibly a field goal on the board to end the first half after Washington is complete with this offensive drive. In addition, Wolverines will get the ball back to start second half. No, it'll be Washington getting the ball back. That's what I meant, Washington, so that's why. Yep. I was trying to make a point there and I just got confused. Washington, which is why you want to try and get a score if you're the Wolverines. Take as many timeouts as you can. Third and five. Five yards to pay dirt for the Huskies. We're stifled from the eight-yard line earlier. Two receivers to the left. Odunze on the, by himself to the right. They motion him in tight. Penix going to take it himself, and he stops short. Brought down at the three-yard line. And Washington's going to run a play here, I think. Fourth down. I don't like, I mean, yeah, keep the ball in Penix's hands, but to throw a design run on third and five, I get it as a tendency breaker somewhat, um, but you've got the best receiver in the country. Maybe get the ball to him, somebody else. I don't like that play call on third and five. Jenkins ranged over to make the stop. Such an athletic freak. Ball marked at the three-yard line. Clock ticks under 55 seconds. Goal to go from the three. Penix, shotgun. Johnson to his left, dropping back to throw. Penix looking. He's got his man. Touchdown. It's McMillan, and we've got a flag thrown. He beat Sainer still. Um, McMillan's grittying. 
It looks like it may will await the call and may be on Michigan. Washington's offensive line did a great job picking up a Michigan stunt, even though pressure got there on the edge. It allowed Penix to throw. Here's the call. And it's on Michigan, so the touchdown will stand. Three-yard strike to Jalen McMillan over the middle of the field. Offensive line, that Joe Moore award-winning unit did just enough to keep Penix protected, give him a couple of extra beats to fire it to and McMillan. He's been sacked once in this game, has not been sacked more than twice in any game this season. Only 11, now 12 throughout this whole season. That's, that's the big deal why they won the Joe Moore Award, did this Washington offensive line, even though they haven't run the ball as effectively as you'd like. Gross's extra point is good. But if, uh, again, this goes back to Michigan's decision to go for it on fourth down. Only up seven, Washington will get the ball back at the end, or uh, at the beginning of the second half. Um, and, and it's a coaching miscalculation, not to mention the defensive backfield errors by Michigan at the end of this drive. The pass interference by Sainer still sets the Huskies up first in goal. Uh, and even though he lets up a touchdown a couple plays later, there was still a holding penalty on Will Johnson that would have led to an automatic first down and another couple cracks at it for the Huskies. And Johnson, who's been tremendous all season, gives one up there, a rare sight to see. So just like that, the Huskies have flipped this game on its head. It's head, they're not done yet. 17 to 10 is your score. Michigan gonna get the football back with 42 seconds, no timeout, the chance to try to make something happen and extend their lead to two scores going into the break. Again, Washington will get the football first out of our halftime break. Gross boots it away, fair caught by Finally. Morgan. And we've seen him take it out twice today, was stuffed both times. Huskies average only about three yards of return on punts, 10 on kicks, but smart move by the Wolverines there to just take the touch back. 11 plays, 61 yards, just over four minutes for a score. So Michigan ready to roll from the 25 yard line. McCarthy, does he have some magic in him to end the half? Three receivers to the right and one to the left. Corum, the tailback. JJ over the middle, Loveland open. Loveland breaking tackles toward the 45. A good pickup on first down. About 19 there for Michigan. Loveland and has been one of McCarthy's most reliable targets this season. It's surprising how long it took for them to actually turn to him. There was that almost catch on the sideline earlier. That was a great play. First and 10 for Michigan from the 44. JJ looking to throw. And he's got his man, it's Johnson. Johnson bounds. can't get out of bounds. The clock keeps turning. Only a four yard pickup there. Maybe five. 22 seconds now for Michigan. They can't stop the clock. Spike. JJ gonna spike it here with 16 to go. Michigan looking to get it into range for a James Turner field goal. His season and career long is both 50 yards. And, and CJ turned away from the defender Jackson and didn't try and get out of bounds. Miscues at the end of this first half for Michigan after, excuse me, being on it for the like first half of the second quarter, whole first quarter. It's a separation between winning and losing. And I know they're winning by seven, but don't like to see it. Bunch set to the right for the Wolverines. JJ looking left side, gonna throw there, it's incomplete. Mm -hmm. Wanted Johnson, and now Michigan has it fourth and three. And are they going to go for it again? I, Offense still on the field for Michigan. They're going to go for it again. They don't have time to call a timeout and punt. They don't have a timeout left. Not that you can't just take the delay and still boot it, but. Yeah, I guess you're right. And I, that may be what they do. I think. I think so. Play clock down to 10, and Michigan still hasn't even huddled up. That's what's going to happen here. Michigan just going to take the penalty and punt it away to end the half. 12 seconds as Michigan incurs the delay of game. And you're giving a lot of the energy away to the Huskies at the end of this half. Um, 
we referenced earlier the, the Georgia TCU game as a point of reference, but Michigan after that point really uh, has been has been stuffed by Washington. And, and now the crowd's getting back into it after really being stunned early. Fourth and eight, Michigan will have to punt. Got to make sure to get this away cleanly. Tommy Doman, the punter for Michigan with Giles Jackson back deep for the Huskies. Great punt. Takes a perfect Michigan bounce. Tommy Doman with another beauty inside the two yard line and three seconds to go. Penix just gonna take a knee and head to halftime. And coming from a semifinal where special teams was, had such a negative impact on the game, that is an absolutely perfect boot from Doman and it sets them up perfectly. And I, I was surprised that Washington didn't try to send some more rushers on that punt. Um, they really played it safe. For me, that's a point where you pin your ears back and try and make a play with 12 seconds left. You're not trying to, to pop a big return um, being that deep in your own end zone, and, and really it's not even worth it to field a punt inside the 10 or inside the 5. So Penix backed up deep will get the knee down and head to halftime. It's been a back-and-forth game early. Michigan on top 17-10 to after... A dominant rushing attack early set the Wolverines up with a couple of long scores. Two 40 yarder, 40 plus yarders from Donovan Edwards leads the way for Michigan. For Washington, it's Penix to McMillan in the two minute drill. And, and that will be our score heading into the half. Something helpful for Michigan fans, even as that first half kind of ended as a dud. In the 25 instances of a title game in college football, that includes 16 BCS championships and nine college football playoffs, the team leading at halftime has won 19 of those times. Only six times has the team trailing at halftime come back to win. Uh, and we reference the past five or six college football playoff national championships that were really blowouts. Um, so history is on the Wolverine side coming out of halftime, but they have to come back with the force that we've seen this season just shutting teams down in the third quarter. That Michigan has to come back. The running game has to be executed better. And J.J. McCarthy, who right now is 5 for 11 for 81 yards, needs to pick up the slack in the pass game if Michigan wants to play complete offensive football to put away this game. I mean, I absolutely agree. We've seen, like, the... Huskies were pretty quiet in that first quarter. They came back out. They looked like the better team for much of that second quarter. Wolverines normally tend to be a better team going in to the third quarter. They've always been a second half team this season. Bodes well for the continuation of this game. But for right now, it'll be still Wolverines up, even if it feels a little desolate. And as we're going to move into our halftime coverage, I'm going to... Real quick, if, sorry, my bad. If you are interested in supporting student radio and everything that we do, again, we are WCPN Sports, the official student radio of Michigan Athletics, the student voice of Michigan Athletics. We are student radio and are unable to put commercials or ads or receive money for advertisements on our productions. And so if you are so inclined to help student radio and help fund our travel that sends us to places like this because it is mostly student out of pocket funded for many of these uh, trips which are, are not cheap to say the least uh, so if you are interested in supporting there's a link in our bio if you're interested in donating so we do appreciate anyone that does decide to help us out and continue to support the coverage that we provide ad free commercial free for Michigan athletics throughout the season. Again, we don't just do football. Our softball coverage and baseball coverage in the spring will be ramping up soon. Our men's and women's basketball and hockey coverage are in the full swing of things, and we cover everything from volleyball to soccer to field hockey and more in the fall. And with that, I'll turn it over to Kendall and Alex for our halftime report. Thank you so much, Kellen, as I was trying to say earlier, but I didn't realize you are doing a little ad read basically uh we're moving into our halftime coverage kellen flynn and william gregor gonna take a little break for a bit 
Well, William Gregory might join us again. We'll see. And we'll welcome back Alex Miller, who will be taking over my second color commentary spot for the second half. How are you doing? How are we doing, Kendall? I'm doing well. I was working the, the score bug during the first half, and now I'm good. Happy to, be back, happy to be back on the on the mic here. I will be taking your spot for the second half, so if you've enjoyed listening to me, you've got about however long halftime is going to be. Oh, like 20 more minutes. Okay. Wolverines came out strong in the first quarter. It looked like they were going to just completely run away with things. Second quarter, not so much. What did you think that the Huskies did to adjust to really you know, stop that explosive Wolverines run game? I mean, the Huskies' defense stepped up. Donovan Edwards had had those chunk runs, and slowly but surely, the Washington defense stepped up, made a couple stops, forced a couple of punts, and here we sit, 17 to 10 at halftime, and we're in for an exciting second half. You know? I mean, I think, I think Washington was helped a little bit. Michigan decided to go for it on fourth down, didn't get it. That failed conversion certainly gave Washington good field position, and, and they capitalized and. This Washington offense can score in bunches, and it'll be interesting to see what happens second half, but I think Michigan can, might want to continue leaning on the run game. I mean, Edwards has his three carries, 93 yards, two touchdowns. Obviously, that's not sustainable, but, I mean, Corum's averaging 10.5 on his eight carries. Mullings averaging seven yards on per carry. Alex Ordi, his two carries come out to 7.5 per carry. So the Michigan run game is working right now, and I, I expect the Wolverines to try to lean on it here in the second half. Absolutely. For the Huskies, things weren't looking too good. Michael Penix Jr. was just getting not the opportunities that he was looking for. However, on that last drive with the touchdown, that was capped by the touchdown throw to McMillan, it looked like things were back in the way that the Huskies are normally operating. Absolutely. And I mean, this is a Washington team that has played close game after close game this year. They've been behind. They've trailed. They've made some impressive comebacks late game. This team has found ways to win in games that didn't seem winnable at certain points in them. And there is no quit. Credit to both the Washington offense and defense for not panicking and staying steady. And they're in this ball game. Seven point game at half. I mean, this is this is anyone's game to win. Michigan has to stay poised. The Michigan defense has to continue to continue to stifle this Washington passing game. Now that we've just oh now that we've discussed both sides of the ball a little bit. We can turn to coaching. Coming into that, that was one of the biggest points going in. Harbaugh versus DeBoer. DeBoer coming off a incredibly coached season. There were some mistakes by the Wolverines, especially some coaching decisions going for it on that fourth down. The play call on that fourth down. There's going to be some questions. If Michigan ends up losing this game, those their media is going to look to those plays as kind of examples of where it started to go wrong. Absolutely, and I, I do think from Harbaugh's perspective, there is reason to consider going for it. You can extend your lead, really sort of lower the Washington morale, and I get the aggressiveness. It just it didn't work out, and we've seen Harbaugh and Sharon Moore stay aggressive on fourth down situations pretty consistently throughout the year, and it's, it's generally worked out. Analytics generally support it as well, so I don't expect them to go away from that. Just didn't work out this time. But Michigan's sitting in a good spot. You're up seven at halftime, and you've largely played pretty well on both sides of the ball. Just a couple errors here and there. But, again, Michigan leading it at halftime, that's, that's really all you can ask for. This is a good Washington team. We can't stress that enough. So. Both teams looking to make adjust adjustments. They came a bit earlier for the Huskies offensively and defensively, whereas the Wolverines floundered a bit going into the end of that second quarter. Luckily for the Wolverines, they have normally been a second half team. They've come out strong from the locker room in most of their games this season. And as William mentioned before we, you know, we went to uh, the halftime break, the team that is winning at half in the national championship normally does tend to pull away with it. I don't want to jinx anything, and the Huskies do get the ball back to start the second half. Right. But there is a time for the Wolverines to make adjustments, and a time where they've proven themselves that they do make adjustments, it would be during this halftime. That's a good point. And starting with the ball, I mean, Michigan made the decision to take the ball first and try to put points up on the board, and it, it worked out. They got out to the early lead, but this Washington offense can be dangerous. I mean. 
they've really been largely as expected. Penix did make the mistake, has made a couple mistakes on a couple a couple routes, but overall they're explosive. He missed Odunze on what would have been a touchdown. Take that ball back. This is a different game in a little bit. I mean, they have th struggled though to run the ball, and that was something we saw against Texas. That's something that's been an issue. They had a good stretch going toward the end of the regular season where Dylan Johnson had a couple hundred yard games and they were really running it well, but Johnson only at 2.9 yards a carry. He, did, he was under three yards a carry against Texas and Michigan's interior front has continued to stifle that side of the offense and that puts a lot of pressure on Penix and the, these receivers. If they can step up. Penix has shown it at times. This receiving core is as good as anyone in the country. I mean, three NFL receivers. Odunze is just a special football player in particular and I'm really excited to see. I mean, I think they come out firing on all cylinders, first possession. Penix could take a shot on first down and just try to put seven on the board from 75 yards out. That wouldn't stun me. So really excited. I mean, the long halftime show can be um, an interesting aspect of these playoff games. Gives teams a lot of time in the locker room, us a lot of time up in the broadcast booth. The bands get to perform. But it's going to be a great second half coming up, Kendall. Yeah, absolutely. Like you mentioned, things are really opening up for the Huskies at the end of that second quarter. It's going to be exciting to see what they decide to go with, what DeBoer is cooking up in the locker room, say with the Wolverines, what Harbaugh's saying to motivate his players. This is a big game. The last time, let's see if I can actually pull this up really quick. If you want to take that. Um, We've got trying, some history trying to get a graphic. Michigan, but that I'm trying to find. These two teams played each other in the Rose Bowl a couple times in the 90s and once in the 80s. Split that two to one, Michigan's favor. The last time that both of these teams were winning a national championship, let's party like it's the 1990s. The Huskies last split their national championship in 1991 with Miami, whereas the Wolverines also had a split national championship with Nebraska. That one was in 1997. Both teams, it's been a long time for them. Well, not as long maybe compared to some other schools, but especially for the Wolverines program that wants to see some more success in the postseason. It's been over 30 years for the Huskies, and one of them will come out on top here today. Yeah, and this, I mean, the CFP format, obviously, it's changing next year to the 12 team, but this four-team playoff, it's the final year, and it, it's been an SEC champ the last couple of years. That's going to change, and yeah, and we, we sort of talked about it in the top of the show at the pregame. We had a little tech issue there, but this is going to, this is kind of, I think, both of these teams' year to win a national championship, right? Washington has a ton of seniors on the defensive side of the ball. Nearly all of their starters on that side are seniors. And on offense, Penix is going is to is gone. And Odunze, they might lose a couple pieces of their offensive line, the Joe Moore award-winning offensive line. So they have to feel like this is their year. Of course, Kalen DeBoer is going to keep recruiting and building a good Washington program in the Big Ten next year. But they have to feel like that's, this is their year. And same with Michigan. And these have been the best two teams in college football this year. And that's why they're here, and again, it's it's going to be a close game. Michigan pulled out, out of, got hot early, and now we've settled in, 17-10, so. Go ahead and take a look at some of those first half stats. Wolverines with 290 total yards compared to the Huskies, 160. However, 128 of those are passing yards for the Huskies with only 81 for the Wolverines, 32 rushing yards and for the Huskies, 209 for the Wolverines. Both teams with two penalties apiece. However, the Wolverines cost them more, especially with that pass interference call that ended up setting up the Huskies perfectly for their touchdown. Something I found interesting was time of possession. A huge point coming into this game was keeping the ball out of Penix's hands. Because, you know, they're thinking that they're going to do a lot of quick drives. Wolverines can win the time of possession game. You know, they can win this one. That was the thought going into it. However, Huskies had 17 minutes and 9 seconds compared to only 12 minutes and 51 seconds for the Wolverines as their two touchdowns came off those long uh, runs by Donovan Edwards. Yeah, and I think that's an interesting thing to monitor. I mean, Michigan tends to lean more into the ground game, these long drives. It's just that that ground game has opened up into a couple really big plays 
early in this one, but Washington can be explosive. And yeah, time of possession is an interesting, interesting thing to monitor because one team can score in two minutes, another team can go down and have a nice seven, eight minute drive. So we'll see where this one goes. I mean, in general, I think you're right. Michigan's the slower team. They're content to run, a, run the ball, get four yards of carry, keep marching down the field. Washington has struggled to run the ball against good run defense like a stout Michigan team. And in turn, they've got an explosive passing game that can get hot in a hurry. So I think Michael Penix will be looking deep early and often in the second half. And he has the weapons. So Odunze especially is just such a great vertical threat. And so is Polk too. But I, I really, Odunze is one of the better receivers I think I've ever seen at the college level over the last couple of years. So. Absolutely. He and Marvin Harrison Jr. were kind of the, you know, two top players Harrison Jr. potentially getting some more national love, but you could argue that Adunze is the best wide receiver in college football right now. We've talked a lot about Penix, about McCarthy, about Adunze. Who is a impact player for you for the Wolverines and the Huskies going into the second half? I'm going to go with a couple. I mean, for Michigan, I think it's your back four or five. Mike Sanders still, Will Johnson, the safeties, Rod Moore. Makari Page has made a couple big plays in the first half because if those players can step up and help contain this Washington passing offense, I don't see Washington get it go getting it going on the ground. And it's not solely on the defensive backfield. If the Michigan D-line can continue getting pressure, they got home on Penix. Um, Kenny Grant had that massive sack up the middle. And But in general, if that defensive backfield can step up, I think that's really big time for Michigan and looking on the other side for Washington I think it's their front seven can they contain the Michigan run game because that has not been the case in this first half and that front line Trice the big guys in the middle the linebackers UFO show has been a really good tackler for them all year if those guys can step up and contain the run game I mean that's what it's, we're looking at coming to this one it's been the case Michigan's run game Washington's pass game I think which defense can step up and contain the other side is likely the team that's going to come out on top of this ball game Absolutely. We've got about uh, seven, seven minutes. minutes remaining in this halftime uh, before we go into the second half. Obviously, that's self-explanatory. <laughs> Score is 17-10 in favor of the Wolverines. If you're just joining us, welcome to the broadcast. If you've, you're sticking through through, through, through halftime, we appreciate you being here. I'll step away for the second half. It'll be Alex Miller, William Gregory, and Kellen Flynn back for play-by-play. -play. Yeah, don't we, go anywhere. It should be a fun, fun second half. Should be a fun second half. We appreciate that if you would stick with us. But as you mentioned, going back to talking about the run game, like you mentioned, they had a, really struggled to contain the Wolverines in that first quarter. They kind of, you know, managed to salvage things in the second quarter. However, we also saw them kind of turn away from Donovan Edwards. He had those huge rushes that were very important, you know, got those um, two touchdowns, then they turned more to Corum and Mullings. Wonder if we'll see it, them return to Edwards as he, you know, was a big impact player in that first quarter. Yeah, and Donovan Edwards has had a really interesting season. I mean, it's been very much so talked about how last year he was the explosive play guy for this Michigan offense, and to put it bluntly, that hasn't been the case this year. He's struggled to run the ball in big chunks. He struggled to really average a decent yards per carry on the season, but Donovan Edwards can be an explosive football player. He's great in space. He's strong. He's athletic. He's a really good pass catcher. He's great in the passing game, and Edwards is certainly a guy the Wolverines can lean on, but also Blake Corum has run the ball great on his eight touches, 84 yards, so I think that Corum is a guy Michigan has, I mean, he's shown Michigan time and time again that they can lean on him, and I expect them to try to lean on both backs, but I really, I trust Corum with the football. I really, he's the guy I go to if I'm Michigan and I want to keep grinding down the field. Time of possession game, we talked about it. Corum's the guy for Michigan. But Edwards has been great and keep getting him involved. See if he can make another chunk play. Absolutely. Also wonder if they're going to start opening up the pass a little bit more. They didn't need to turn to it in the first half. Unfortunately, if things continue to, if the Huskies can get to improve, they might need to get J.J. more involved. Players are starting to come back out on the field with about five minutes remaining. 
Huskies will receive the second half kick. They chose to defer. In the first half. Yeah, so it's 17-10 right now. So Huskies can certainly threaten on this first possession, tie this ball game up, and really excited to get back underway. About four minutes left here in halftime. Don't go anywhere. Stick with us on WCBN Sports. This should be, I mean, this is it's the national championship. Why would you go anywhere? So it's going to be a good one the rest of the way. Washington, Michigan both returning to the field and excited for this second half. Like we mentioned at the beginning of the halftime break, and I'll mention it again to kind of close things out before my fellow broadcasters return and I can hand over the mic. If you enjoyed our broadcast so far or you think you'll enjoy it, we are a student-run organization. We are entirely funded through donations. There is a link in our bio if you would like to donate. Absolutely. And also, thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate anyone listening to this broadcast. So this is big time for us. National championship, so it's a fun one. Wrap it up. Like I mentioned, about three minutes. Three keys to the game. You can pick either team. You can do three keys total before I hand the mic off. I mean, I've touched on a couple of the big things early in this halftime show, but I think three keys. I think Michigan's defense against the passing game, the defensive backs, if the DBs can step up. Mike Sanders still has been great this year. Will Johnson's been great this year. If one of those guys or one of the safeties, Rod Moore, can make a play, that could be game-changing for Michigan's defense. That's one. Two, um, I think I'm going to go with J.J. McCarthy. I expect the Michigan run game to continue to just be what it's been all year, to get plays consistently, pick up plays in chunks, and if Michigan can get the pass game going, if McCarthy can have a couple deep shots and really get the passing game going, I think that'll open up even more for Michigan. And Number three on the Washington side, I, it'd be great to see them run the ball. That would be, but that'd be really great for them. But I think the key is this Washington offense. Can they pick up the pace? They've been explosive all year. I, I mean, coming to this game, that was what it was talked about. That juggernaut offense, this Michigan juggernaut defense, who was going to win that battle? And we'll see if this Washington offense can step up, make plays, and if they can, this game could go down to the wire. Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and hand off the broadcast. You'll, you can do the transition. Thank you so much. I've had a great time. And make sure you stick around for the second half. Thank you, Kendall. And with that, I'm going to welcome William back on and welcome into the booth the third headset for half number two, Alex Miller, as we make a couple of adjustments in the broadcast booth here at NRG Stadium, home of the Houston Texans, and home of the 2024 College Football Playoff National Championship. William, Alex, how we doing after half one? Michigan up 17 to 10, but Washington with a couple of big plays late, maybe some questionable decisions from Michigan that led to a one score game instead of a potential large Michigan lead. Again, Michigan went up 17 to three early and looked like they might run away with this one quite literally. And all of a sudden, it's a one score game going into the half. Hey, you got 30 minutes left and you're up by seven. Um, got to close this game out. It's, it's really that simple. You're not going into halftime tied starting against 0-0. So for Michigan, just continue to play the kind of ball you have been, uh, maybe not at the end of the first half, as I'm sure I've made clear my opinion uh, on the last few minutes in that game. But the Wolverines obviously have a shot here for their first national title since 1997, and you just have to close it out. I mentioned that of the 25 last college football national championship games, the team that has led at halftime won 19 of those. Michigan has a chance to be the 20th. Tommy Doman set to kick off for the Wolverines out of the break. 
here we go. And that will sail through the end zone for a touchback. So Penix will get the football at the 25 yard line ready to go to work. He's been good today, but not game breaking. And that's been kind of the key for Michigan so far is how do you keep him in check? And they've done a good enough job so far. Penix 13 for 21, a buck 28 and a score in the first half. And he took one sack. This is what Michigan has done against good quarterbacks. Limit them. The motion out Rodgers, Penix pumps, pocket collapsing, and he is nearly picked off, incomplete. Will Johnson, oh, they're gonna roll it an interception. Will Johnson, what a play. And it's really similar to a few J.J. McCarthy interceptions we've seen where you're just trying to see him throw it out of bounds. He keeps it inbounds along the sidelines. Will Johnson able to make a play on that football. We have to see on the replay, he bobbled the football as he was coming to the ground. I, I, I thought it was a trap catch. Believe it was the running back, Rodgers, that came over to almost play defense and punch the ball out. But Will Johnson has the turnover, buffs on on the sideline right, right now. Gross point south zone making a play. And a talented two-sport athlete, was a high recruit in basketball as well at Gross Point South. Trust me, I, I know all about that. <laughs> and, and coming over to make a play, I don't know if they're going to review this or what. Um, Michigan's on the field on offense, so I didn't even see a replay of it or anything, but Michigan, what a moment to start the second half. That play was made by the D-line, getting pressure again and forced Pennings to get try to throw it away and led to the pick. So D-line getting home continues to be a weapon for Michigan. So Wolverines take over at the 32. McCarthy claps his hands, gives Corum, dancing in the backfield, creating some space, picks up two. Something out of nothing. Good cut by Corum to gain at least two yards. But again, the Washington defense has stepped up ever since that last big gashing Corum run. Um, They've, they've been stout against this Wolverine inside rushing attack. Yes, we got a second look at the play. That was definitely a pick by Johnson. Got his arms underneath the football. Fantastic play from number two. Penix almost tried to throw it away there, just didn't get it far enough out of bounds. Uncommon mistake for Penix, his 10th pick of the season. McCarthy claps, gives Corum. He's got a lane, Blake Corum! Brought down, diving toward the 15. A great burst from Corum as he surged through that gap. Sets up first and 10 for the Wolverines at the 16 yard line. And Alex, this is exactly the jolt of life Michigan needed out of the break. Yeah, the Michigan run game has been explosive today. They've been so good all year. This offensive line is getting great push and Corum's vision is just so good. He's had a couple really nice cuts on these last couple runs and makes plays for Michigan. Good block by Barnhart to seal. And a flag thrown there. We have three flags on the field, four actually. I mean, easy false start on Michigan. <laughs> you had like three different receivers going on their own time. Oh, they hit us with the everyone but the center. So that'll back Michigan up five yards. Second penalty, the penalty of the day on Michigan. Or excuse me, the third which is already over their season average on the season. Balls at the 21 now, got to get it to the six to move the chains. McCarthy in the shotgun, Corum to his left. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. They bring Loveland in motion, right to left. As a lead blocker for Corum, and Corum has nowhere to go. Swallowed up in the middle. That was Braylon Trice, the star of this defense for Washington who made the hit. And you mentioned Loveland on motion in that play. Um, he got where he needed to be in, into the second level, but Nugent and Barnhart couldn't move their assignments off their spot. Quorum gets stuffed. Trice, first team all Pac-12 this season. His 12 and a half tackle for loss this season. Another false start. And Michigan, excuse me, not a TFL. Quorum got back to the line there, but Michigan will be backed up again. Self-inflicted wounds by the Wolverines. That one's on Henderson, the left tackle for the Wolverines, and 
Michigan got a huge boost there from Will Johnson with the takeaway. Johnson's been fantastic for Michigan this season. His fourth pick of the year couldn't have come at a bigger time. And the offense in danger of, in danger of squandering it here, second and 18. JJ dropping back to throw, looking. Incomplete, it was batted down to the line. And I, I think he was looking for Loveland who motioned right to left, went out on a wheel route. McCarthy under pressure, couldn't get the throw away to Colston who, I don't know if he was exactly open, but he's such a big body. We've seen him box out safeties before against Michigan State, Angelo Gross, uh, a touchdown in East Lansing on a play similar to that. Can't connect. And this Husky defense looking to make a big stand here off the turnover. Third and 18, ball on the 24. A couple of false starts from Michigan backed them up. What's coming? Huskies show pressure. JJ, pass rusher in his face, finds Loveland, but not nearly enough to get to the first down marker. Brought down at the 20-ish. And so that'll lead to a James Turner field goal try. And the pressure came in for Washington. They showed rushing six, only rushed five, but had two different twists on the inside that led to a free rusher. McCarthy had to get that football away. Good coverage downfield by Washington as well. And the defense, since that last score by Michigan, has played spectacularly, I think. 38-yard field goal try for Turner. Only missed two kicks on the season. Been perfect from 30 to 39 yards. Kick on the way. And it's good. James Turner extends the Michigan lead to 10. 20 to 10 is our score. After an interception thrown by Michael Penix, Will Johnson made the play. But a couple of false starts for Michigan back them up, and they can't punch it in for six. 11.55 to go in the third quarter, and Washington going to get the football back. Kellen, you said it um, about as well as the beginning of the second half could have gone for Michigan, getting that interception with Washington having the momentum out of halftime, scoring that last touchdown um, and, and making some stands defensively. Obviously, they do here again, but Michigan still extends their lead to double digits. Uh, and, and, of course, Washington can, can get up there with the best of them coming from behind. But uh, Michigan, very lucky to start the second half, big break after some poor execution and continued on that offensive drive as well. And Alex, I mean, we talked about the turnover, how that shifted momentum in favor of Michigan, maybe took some of the wind out of Washington's sails. The defense did not, it didn't seem like that happened. The defense didn't come on the field downtrodden that they just, their offense just gave up a turnover and gave the Michigan offense a short field. They came out, pinned their ears back and made a stand. And they gave up the chunk play to Corum, but other than that, did a really nice job. But part of it is Michigan's self-inflicted wounds. The two false starts pushed you back and forced Michigan to try to throw the ball. And McCarthy and his passing offense have struggled a little bit today to move the ball. And when it's second and 18, you tend to look to throw, and that's what Michigan did. And they had to settle for the field goal. So McCarthy and his passing offense are going to have to step up and make some plays in the second half. The Wolverines passing attack has been subject of conversation all season. There was a point in the year where many NFL draft scouts had J.J. McCarthy mocked as a top 10 NFL draft pick, and now that train has kind of cooled down a little bit. Um, and it's a very real question going into next season for Michigan is who's going to play quarterback. Is J.J. going to come back, or is there going to be somebody else that is in that position if he does declare for the NFL draft? It's interesting to think about. I think you saw in the game against Alabama on the last drive, um, J.J. didn't necessarily make big throws. Receivers were schemed open. I'd say he's made one big-time throw in this one, that post route to Roman Wilson that, that put the Wolverines over midfield and led to their second touchdown. But I just think that McCarthy has to, to keep his accuracy. He's been inaccurate in this game, um, wide with great routes to get open that underneath passing game that Michigan has, has kind of thrived on this season has, has been lacking. And so Doman ready to boot it as Michael Jordan and Derek Jeter are in the house tonight, shown on the Jumbotron. Some star power in the building 
for the national championship. This is the first Jordan team in the national championship. Michigan, the first Jordan football team. Doman will send it deep. And that will again bounce for a touchback. We haven't seen much out of Daniel Nada today, the lead return man for the Huskies. So Alex, Penix getting the football back, just threw his 10th interception of the season, but I don't expect him to, that to slow him down, and I'm expecting you feel the same. Yeah, I mean, Mich I, I think they're going to come out throwing, take a shot on first or second down, and just, I mean, there's no one in the backfield right now. This is the Washington offense. Take shots, outside threats. That's what they're looking for. They motion Johnson in to the left of Penix. Trips to the right. Odunze, the lone receiver, to the left. It's a give to Johnson, looking for a crease. He finds one and picks up four. And Johnson, even hurt, still gets the bulk of the carries. Washington's running back coach, Lee Mark, said, if you can't be a complete back, you will not play for us. We've seen Nixon. Uh, we've seen Tybo Rogers, But Johnson, even hobbled, is getting the majority of burn in this game. Penick, shotgun, Johnson to his left again. It's a screen set up for Odunze. Odunze finds some space. He's so good in that aspect. And he's got enough for the first down. And ja uh, excuse me, West over the tight end, carrying really three Wolverines on that play. Stewart, Barrett, and Will Johnson all struggling to scrape off their blocks and get to Odunze to make the tackle. Washington able to pick up a first down. We haven't seen Odunze deep except for the one miscue. It's been all kind of scheme throws. Jack Westover's played a really good football game so far today. Penix, shotgun, has Johnson to his left. Polk all the way out to the left. Pressure coming. They set it up for the tight end, Colt. Colt breaking tackles, and he's going to get over midfield before he's forced out of bounds. Devin Colt, and that'll draw a flag. Michigan going to get dinged for unnecessary roughness. Man, I mean. <laughs> Uncharacteristic stuff from this Wolverine program. Kendall talked about it. The Wolverines, the least penalized team in the country, and, and they can't stop committing infractions in the last 10 minutes of this game. Meanwhile, kind of unexpected to me. I like what Washington's done here. They've tried to open up the offense with some short throws, some setup screens, and both Odunze and Colt made plays in space, and Huskies are chugging down the field all of a sudden. Kalen DeBoer, one of the best in the country at scheming up his playmakers in space. Tybo Rogers to the right of Penix in the backfield. They motion McMillan left to right. He's in the slot. And they fake it to Rogers. Ball is tipped in, drops harmlessly to the turf around the 25-yard line. And I think... Looking for, I believe, Odunze there. A lot of these short throws, uh, Michigan is generating pressure, and I talked about Penix has only been sacked 11 times, now 12 after the first half sack by Michigan. Getting the ball out quick instead of waiting for these deep throws is what Washington has kind of been forced to do, and it's working. Huskies have it at the 34, 10.25 to go in the quarter, second and 10. Penix claps his hands, gets the snap. It's a give to Rodgers, Tybo Rodgers. Not much space there, got one, maybe two. And now a third down and long for the Huskies. Um, we've talked about it all game long, just keeping the football in front of you, letting Washington make plays over the course of a drive. You don't want to call it bend, don't break, but for, uh, up to this point, that's the kind of defense Michigan has played. Huskies came out in a pistol look with Odunze as the pistol back. They motion out to empty. Under 10 minutes to go in the quarter, third and eight. Single coverage, Will Johnson on him outside. Ball on the 32-yard line. Penix claps his hands. Pressure coming. Free rusher. It's Barrett. Complete over the middle of the Did field to Westover, but he's going to be short of the line to gain by a handful of yards. Decision time now for Kalen DeBoer. Washington went empty on that play. Michigan showed cover zero. I think it was a simulated pressure. They only ended up sending four. Barrett came off the edge. Josiah Stewart dropped back into yep. coverage. He made the tackle there. Barrett unblocked, uh, put some blindside pressure on Penix, and the safety motioned over actually to, to help bracket Odunze with Will Johnson. So Brady Gross on for the field goal try from the 28. It'll be about a 46-yard kick. It's on the way, and it is good. 
It's a good boot, one score game. Easy decision for Kalen DeBoer to make. And instead of going for it on a short fourth down, making a one score game, Michigan on offense has looked stagnant, only scoring the field goal in this quarter because of Washington's mistake. And, and now for the Huskies, it's really letting Michigan beat you. Um, they, they've struggled to do that ever since their big jump to start the game. And, and, and I think Washington is in a good spot, being down by seven, uh, able to score again. But I want to give praise once again to the Michigan defense. Um, like I said, Ben don't break. Don't want to call it that, but um, that's what it was there. It's, it's effective against the Huskies. 20 to 13 is our score. We've got a good football game here in the national title game so far. Michigan jumped out to a quick 17-3 lead powered by two Donovan Edwards scores, both of them long ones, 41 and 46 yards. And then the Michigan offense stalled a little bit, and Washington took over on a short field. Michigan went for it on fourth and three late, didn't convert. Huskies go down the field, punch it in for a score, and then what we've seen in the second half, the interception from Johnson set up the field goal for the Wolverines, and then the Huskies just put three through there. So Michigan going to get the ball back after the TV timeout. J.J. McCarthy and company will get a chance to hit the field. William, you talked about this offense stagnating for Michigan. Alex, what do you think is the key to getting some of that juice back? Because Michigan has ran the football unbelievably well in this game. Over, I believe, 200 yards on the ground. But it feels like they have started to get comfortable dropping back to pass. If I'm Michigan, I go back to the run. I, I think Corum has been really great at picking his spots today. Of course, Edwards on his three touches has two explosive touchdowns. I lean on the run. The, the passing offense hasn't been there today, and that's been kind of the story as of the last couple of weeks for Michigan. And we know what this running game can do. We know what this O-line can do in the ground game. And I'd lean on that. William, any thoughts? I've been saying it all game. Like, play winning football, run the football. <laughs> Michigan's averaging... 11 yards a carry plus. Uh, obviously, they've been stopped on a few, but. And that's inflated a little bit by some of the big runs. I, I just, I don't think that you can count on Michigan getting stuffed on every run. And three big runs is not a mistake. Yeah. Three explosive runs of 40 plus yards is not an accident. I, I just think that Michigan, we talked about it before we came back on air, um, sometimes thinks they're a different team at points in the game when they just can be who they've always been at the root, which is a running football team through Blake Corum. And I feel like Sharon Moore, like, when it comes down to it, leans on his guys. And his guys are the O-line and the running backs. I, I hope that's where Michigan leans. And, and, I, and I mean, this is the game of the year, right? So I hope he goes with his guys. Two undefeateds doing battle, and it's been close so far. Again, Michigan jumped out to that early lead, but Washington is hung around and is right in this football game. One score game, 2013, as Grady Gross will kick it deep for the Huskies. Morgan back deep to return for Michigan. He'll field it, and actually he'll just let it fly out of the end zone. Touchback. Morgan took it out twice earlier in the game, did not get much, about 15 yards on each return. Michigan will take it at the 25. Now, is this the drive where Michigan goes up two touchdowns and, and, and kind of extends their arm against the Huskies or do they let Washington hang around? That's the question that needs to be answered on this offensive drive, which is pretty crucial with nine minutes left in the third quarter. If this is a long drive, you're almost knocking on the door of the fourth. Washington down two touchdowns. If you're Michigan, you want the ball in the end zone in about six or seven minutes. Wolverines get the football back. Just under nine minutes to go in the third quarter. First and 10 from the 25. Shotgun eye. You don't see that a lot. And they'll change it to a split back, split backfield with Edwards and Mullings. Edwards gets it on the handoff going to the right side. Breaks it to the outside and picks up about five. So Michigan going to stay ahead of the sticks on first down. Michigan fans wanted a flag, too, for unnecessary roughness there. I think they just wanted payback. Um, Edwards ridden out of bounds by Hampton, not really taken and down. Edwards just froze the D-tackle. A Tui Tui Tele with a little shimmy there. Edwards still in the football game. He's to the left of McCarthy. Three receivers to the left. They bring the tight end over to the right. Morris in motion. They loop him back around. It's a give to Edwards. Edwards 
trying to find some space, doesn't get much, picks up three. And, and now they're getting Dono more involved, um, up to five carries on the day now for Edwards, but I think Corum on that play breaks the tackle on the inside by Carson Bruner and, and picks up the first down there. Edwards, not as powerful as a runner, gets sat down. When players were asked earlier in the week at Media Day who the strongest players on the team were, Corum was a name that came up often. It's third and two now, under eight to go. It's a give to Blake. Blake, nowhere to go. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Carson Bruner was the one that made the play for a loss. And, and Bruner, very interesting story. His dad, Mark, was on Washington in 1991, their last undefeated season, their last nice national title as a freshman, uh, winning that game, and now Washington, of course, in the national title game and undefeated. His father, Mark, also played his last game in the NFL in Houston. So cool full circle moment for Carson Bruner. Doman to kick it for the Wolverines. High spiraling kick. Giles Jackson comes up to receive it at the 26 yard line and Michigan close to kick catch interference there but the Gunners is able to stay away. We saw that in the Sugar Bowl. It was a huge play late. Texas got a stop and got the football back and got an extra 15 yards because Washington committed kick catch interference. Nearly cost them the football game. I think we have the answer to the question I posed before that last Michigan offensive drive. Um, they're having trouble on offense, and they're going to let Washington stick around. Huskies now with a chance to tie, and it's just not what the Wolverines have wanted after jumping out to the 14-point lead in the first quarter. And interestingly, this is kind of the same thing we saw against Alabama. Michigan was able to move the football and score points early, and then... Midway through the second quarter, third quarter, offense just completely went quiet. It came alive late, obviously, to make some plays, but it's, excuse me. It's, it's funny because throughout the season, Michigan was its strongest in the middle two periods and then tended to fade in the fourth quarter. Um, a lot of that because the starters were we, out, but. but even towards the end, Penn State scoring a touchdown late, um, whatever. But Michigan... In the second and third, sneakily, over the past few weeks has not been as strong as they were to begin the year. Uh, and that's the identity of the football team is to make adjustments at halftime and stymie teams. We've had so many of those third quarter scoreless streaks that Michigan, uh, the, the defense has, has propped up. But right now, Washington has a shot. Each team has kicked a field goal in this quarter, but even after the interception on, on the first drive out of half for Washington, still feel like uh, they just have a lot of, of easier work to do on offense here. Well, William, we were talking about Michigan's offense, and that last set of downs, they went to the run game, all three downs, and didn't pick up the first. And I still, if I'm Michigan, stick with the run game. I mean, they saw it, um, that third and two that Corum didn't pick up. It was a fairly stacked box. Washington brought yeah. a couple DBs down, but I think that Sharon Moore has leaned on that third and short run all year and has been able to pick those up at a pretty consistent rate. I don't think Michigan has to, they don't need to panic. The run game has been there all year. Yeah. It's been there in this game. Uh, on a play like that, I'd love to see a tendency breaker or a check sure. in the line when you're seeing the stack box to say, hey, let's throw a quick breaking route outside or run to the outside. I, I, I just think there have been some he can, there's, Michigan can be predictable at times, but yeah. it's just that it's worked all year long. And Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm a hypocrite for saying that. I preach it, you know, like beat them up front. Um, and there's not much analysis I can give other than Michigan is not beating them up front like I, like Michigan fans would hope they would. And that's also just a good play by the linebacker, yeah. Bruner. Yeah, Bruner made the right read. Bruner made two great plays, back to back. And their D-line got pushed. I mean, wasn't a lot of room in the back to pour him out of the shotgun for it. Ball on the 26 for Penix. Just under seven on the game clock here in the third quarter. First and 10, Wolverines up seven, 20 to 13. That's where you want pressure. They bring the tight end west over in motion and they throw to him. He's gonna be hit at the 30, dive forward toward the 31 and that's where the ball will be marked down. Ernest Hausman and Keon Sab combined on the tackle. Jack Westover's making 37 cool. 
I mean, I, I, I just like his game. Walk on, mostly a basketball player in high school, but he blocks. He's a good player in the receiving yep. game. He's, he's just a, he's a good tight end for, for Washington. He kept 37 because he started off as a fullback, H-back kind of yeah. player, eventually moving to tight end. Now pacing that position group and catches this season. Johnson, the tailback, to the right of Penix. They set up a screen for Polk. Polk with some space. Jalen Polk going to be hit and dropped at the 43. And another receiver screen set up that's majorly successful for Kalen DeBoer. And Washington has really one deep shot today. Uh, they're eating Michigan up underneath in the outside passing game. And I think if there's one thing you could attack, it is that Michigan isn't the fastest team. They're very physical, but you can expose them if you get the right blocks. Rod Moore made the tackle on Polk there. First and 10 from the 42 for the Huskies. Clock ticks to 540. Pressure in the face of Penix, and McMillan got dropped. No receiver there for Penix. Brings up second and 10. And that's the key, just continuing to pressure Penix. What we've seen all night tonight is when he is off his spot and there's pressure coming, <clears throat> excuse me, especially from the inside, he, he's inaccurate. And in that case, McMillan falls to the ground, no receiver for him to throw to. But Michigan has to get pressure up front. Second down and 10 now, prime position for that. After the couple design screens, I'm wondering if they try to open up the playbook a little bit here. Empty set for Penix, Westover motioned all the way out to the right. Penix, plenty of time, looking downfield for Polk, and he overthrew him. Jalen Polk on the deep shot. You just said, William, they haven't taken many today, and that was really the second one. Josh Wallace was in coverage. I exclaimed to Dunze because he was working on a double move against Will Johnson in single coverage, and I thought he'd break free. Great coverage by Johnson. Penix chooses to throw the ball into double coverage, overthrows his intended receiver, but Got to go back to a similar play like that here on third and 10. Third and long. Michigan defense trying to get off the field. Johnson in the backfield to the right of Penix. McMillan and Bernard, the receivers to the left. A couple of flags are thrown, and that's going to be on Washington. And that was another intended deep shot for Adunze. Two button hooks underneath on the left side, covered well by Wallace and Sainer still. That's on Kalepo, the left guard for Washington. It'll back him up third and 15. But Adunze, again, one-on-one -on -one with Will Johnson, and I cannot say enough about what Will Johnson has put on tape today. He has played amazing on the outside, guarding arguably the best wide receiver in the country. And he held his own against Marvin Harrison Jr. in the Ohio State game before he exited that game with an injury. Had a pick there, too. Changed the tide. Shining when the lights are brightest. Had two interceptions in the Big Ten Championship last year against Purdue. Third and 15. Penix, shotgun set. Trips to the left. Lone receivers, Odunze to the right. Penix looking his way. Johnson in coverage. And the throw took him out of bounds. Odunze made a good effort there, but the throw just carried him into the white chalk. And if you're Will Johnson, the boundary's your friend. No safety help. Keep moving Odunze to the sideline and make Penix throw a ball that's nearly impossible to throw. Had a chance. Oh, I do want to say Michigan showed six initially pre-snap, backed off two linebackers, only rushed four, couldn't get any pressure. And for the first time, Penix really had a clean pocket to throw the deep ball. And those are the throws that against Texas, Penix was putting yep. in the bread basket on the money. Unbelievably difficult throws to make that he was nailing. McAllister punts it away. And it's Jake Thaw that was down to receive. He lets it roll, and it's going to take a good Washington bounce inside the 10 to about the 7. Michigan punt return unit again seeing some changes. No Samaj Morgan. It was Jake Thaw, the senior, who muffed it on the 1 against Alabama late. I mean, McAllister got a little lucky there. Short, low punt, and just got the roll about 20 yards. But Michigan puts Jake Thaw back there because he's the guy they trust to make the right decision, make the – and that's – in the biggest part of the punt return game, but let that one roll and not, not ideal for Michigan to start inside their own 15, inside their own 10. And McAllister, the punts all day haven't looked 
pretty, but they've gotten fairly good results. For it's not Washington. about how it looks. It's how about how it, uh, yeah. Well, it, it, it is a, a thing of, like, when the punts aren't really catchable. Right. Thought I had a lot of ground to cover to get to that. It can still bounce down the field and, and, and end up a good play. Um, McAllister had a little bit of trouble with the snap on that punt in particular. Got it away. Michigan, poor starting field position. But, again, another shot. 5-11 to go in the third quarter. Got to move the ball here. Um, Got to get the run game going again. And McCarthy really ha has not uh, um, lived up to his billing in this game. He's had the month to get healthy. Alabama, yes, 200 yards plus, three touchdowns, no picks. But a lot of those throws were easy to make. Um, a lot of those throws really were, were not other than the schemed up throws, especially towards the end of the game. Um, the one catch I can remember, Roman Wilson down the far sideline reaching up to catch a ball that if it went over his head was going to be intercepted. It, it was tipped at the line, but um, continue to talk about McCarthy's accuracy problems today. 6 of 13, he's going to go down this season, and I don't know how this game will change it, but he's a over 72% passer this season. That'll be the Michigan program record. Uh, but in the back half of the year, it just hasn't shown. I remember, I, I think, through that stretch of cupcakes on the schedule for Michigan, he was sitting at like 78% of his passes being complete. I know that's around where Bo Nix finished. But I, I believe there was at one point he was sitting close to 87% after like the first two weeks of the season. But for Michigan, as it's been all year, it's the defense that makes a play there, getting the stop on the potent Washington offense that had been kind of humming, and gives the offense another chance to get something going. But a good punt from Jack McAllister pins Michigan deep. And this, this is a huge game. Like, not even to talk about the implications of the football season, but for a Michigan athletic program that has kind of failed to capture these championship game moments in basketball, in hockey, any other sport, this is a big deal for Michigan to win this game and kind of get the monkey off the back of Michigan's big four sports. Talk about the baseball team losing in 2019, too. Two national championship game appearances for the basketball team in the last 10 years as Corum receives the handoff and has nowhere to go. Might have got back to the line of scrimmage. And you've, you've heard so many different members of the media say, does Michigan really trust J.J. McCarthy? Uh, and, and right now is a situation backed up in the shadow of your own goalposts. If you haven't gotten an answer already, you will hear second and ten. I think you got that answer against Alabama. I, you got to make him go down the field at some point, but right now, second and ten, is. are you going to let him rip it? Let's I mean, see. First down, the box was full of watching defenders. They knew we were run Michigan was running. I knew Michigan was running, and they ran the ball, and to no effect. 4.30 to go in the quarter. It's a give to Corum. Corum picks up a couple. Going to set up a third and long. Uh, it's obvious Washington has shored up its, its problem areas. Um, and I know I said to run the ball, but it's not working. And you, you can try and make it work, but you can run up to the line of scrimmage a million times, and if it's only gaining you two yards, you're not going to pick up a first down through four downs. I said at halftime, the key to this game was if Washington's front seven could step up against the run, and they have on these last few possessions. If I'm Michigan, I go play action, try to pick up this third and eight in the air. Trips to the right. J.J. going to drop back and throw it. Pressure coming, steps up in the pocket. Here goes McCarthy using his legs. J.J.'s got the first down and more up past the 30. How about that for a play from number nine? And I, I love the scramble, but he wasn't set back to throw for one second before his feet got moving. Not a ton of pressure, and he was just on his horse. Um, not sure if there were wide receivers open downfield or not, but, I mean, a great pickup by nine. I just think that he's got to trust his arm. Coach has got to trust him to deliver the football. Dominic Hampton brought him down. Ball in the 31. It's a keeper for J.J. J.J. gets the edge set enough for the first down and a couple extra. And he is such a dynamic runner. There's been plays 
drawn up their rare against Penn State on a third down and long. He picked up a first down with his legs. A couple of their instances this year. A key play on that Alabama drive late. Yep. The, the game tying touchdown drive. He and, got a first down. We talked about Alex Orgy kind of being a substitute for him. Maybe this gets him going here. Uh, I think we saw that in the Alabama game where got a first down on the ground and then got more confident with his arm. Thaddeus Dixon pushed him out of bounds for Washington, but not after a first down pickup. Ball on the 43 for Michigan. 2.35 to go in the quarter. Bredesen in motion. It's a toss to Edwards. Left side, Edwards Good looking card. for a crease. Picks up about four. So Michigan maybe finding a little bit of that juice back off a couple of McCarthy runs. And to return to McCarthy, I think some of his best moments in the passing game have been in the rollout or in search situations where he has his legs as an option and you get the defensive line moving, you create a little more space because he can be elusive as Williams talked about. And he, he is one of those guys that can make flat out special throws. But you he can worry, make every throw in the book. You worry it's, about the down-to-down -down consistency. It's some of the easy ones that I think he struggles with from time to time. J.J. throws it out, set up a screen to Morgan, nowhere to go. He's buried in the backfield. A big-time hit there. And he had no space. Cameron Fabiculanen was the one that made the play. I, I, I've talked about it all season. That Samaj Morgan screen, there needs to be a wrinkle to that. Fake it one time. Everybody knows that it's coming now. You've run it at least once a game. So Bicky Landon's helmet came off on the hit, so he has to step off the field. Third and 10 now for Michigan. Ball at their own 43. Clock ticks down to 90 seconds in the quarter. Wolverines up 2013. JJ making a couple of checks at the line. Trips to the left, lone receiver is Johnson to the right. Edwards, the tailback, they set up a screen to Wilson. He's got a block, Roman Wilson, not enough for the first down. Man. And he had, I believe that was Colston Loveland out there to block for him, and a good job. Couldn't check the number on that Husky DB that made the play. We'll get a better look here. Asa Turner. Asa Turner, free safety, missed a few games this season, only ended up playing, this is his seventh game. Uh, a few different free safeties, one of them Fabiculanen. Mikel Esteen as well. well. William, you talked about trusting McCarthy and they're on second and long, third and long. They went to the screen pass, not a shot from JJ's arm. High spiraling punt from Doman. Get it bounces down. inside the five and it'll be down to round the 10. Mark it at the 11. Doman with another good punt. Coverage team lets it bounce forward, but still good stuff from Doman. And again, another shot, Michigan about to cross midfield and they can't get over the hump, picking up a, a, a first down pass midfield. Another chance to try and put this game away, but again, Washington, another shot to tie the game. And Michigan ha has done well to let Washington try to beat them over the course of a drive, but at some point against a quarterback like Penix, you can't keep trusting that. Penix standing at his own six yard line. Ball on the 11. Receives the snap. Clean pocket, Penix looking to throw and it's just a bit high for Polk. Wide open. That's a miss from Penix. Wide Polk, open. Wide open, 20 yards down the field, just missed him. Headed toward the sideline. I mean, that's a throw. He's been so good outside the numbers all season, Penix, and I'm sure he wishes he could have that one back because Polk had first down a little more. And really the only way you can beat this Washington passing attack in a lot of ways is if they beat themselves. They have so far today. And Penning's had a really clean pocket there. Michigan brought four and no one got nearly home. Empty set for the Huskies. Two to the right, three to the left. Penix looking to throw. He goes back to the tight end, Westover, who makes a good cut and has enough for the first down. He throws a pair of Wolverine defenders. How about this from the tight end, Jack Westover? He's having a fantastic yeah. game. Great cut to free yourself a Hausman and Wallace. You can't let a guy wear a number 37 do that to you. 37's cool again, Jack Westover. I mean, he lost Hausman on a little stutter step there. Put his foot in the ground and planted and left a couple of Wolverines in the dust. First and 10 as the clock will tick down to the end of the third quarter. Interesting quarter. 15 minutes of football left in the national title. Wolverines up seven, 20 to 13. Huskies. Driving, ball on their own 23 with a first and 10. 
I mean, both teams started off early with field goals, and since then it's been battle of the punters. But, I mean, it's been a defensive showcase in this third quarter. This Washington defense has really stepped up, and, I mean, both offenses haven't helped themselves. Penix missed a throw there, and the Wolverines have had some penalties, and it's been... But kudos to Washington and Kalen DeBoer. They were struggling to stop the run and gave up a chunk play early in the quarter to Corum, but since then have really slowed down the Wolverine run game. And this Michigan passing offense has been talked about a lot, and they've showed up different qualities at this season. McCarthy has made some incredible plays at times, and there have been times where this passing offense has been quiet, and that's largely been the case tonight. And I... I'm at a loss for words at how Michigan has let the physicality in this game get away from them. They were owning Washington through the first 20 minutes you of this You could drive game. a truck through some of those lanes the offensive And defensively, line too. Great sack by Kenny Grant manhandling Kalepo. That was a heck of a move. I mean, come on. And That's been really the only pressure Michigan's been able to get, just rushing yeah. a standard four but without blitzing. 38 rushing yards for Washington, too. I mean, that's not their They've game. struggled to run the ball. But Michigan, on offense and defense, has given up their control of the line of scrimmage. They're lucky that Washington still is down seven. Um, but you talk about a great team being able to win without their fastball. Michigan's been without their fastball for about 20 minutes of game time. We will see how that affects them coming into this fourth quarter where they did close that game against Alabama, scoring 14 points in the final two periods with the overtime drive. If you want to count it at the, as a part of the fourth quarter, sure. Um, they closed out that game. Let's see if they can do it here. 15 minutes of football left to decide the national champion. And it doesn't get any better than this. Seven point game, fourth quarter national championship. Happy and lucky to be here. It's right where you wanna be. And again, thank you for being here with us. If you're joining us on YouTube, thanks for tuning in. You're listening to WCBN Sports, the official student voice of Michigan Athletics. And if you're tuning in over 88.3 FM in Ann Arbor, thank you for listening to 88.3 WCBN FM Ann Arbor and my name is Kellen Flynn William Gregory Alex Miller with me in half number two Kendall Spencer was on the first half she's making sure everything's going smoothly with our broadcast right now 15 minutes to go both of these programs starved for a title Michigan last one 97 Huskies was in 91 Penix gets the football at his own 23. First and 10. It's a give to Johnson. Johnson, no space. Got two, maybe three. And Kellen, you mentioned both these teams not having won a title since the 90s. Neither of them have won a title outright with no other challengers. Nebraska, obviously, 1997 for Michigan has a claim to the 97 title. This would be, for these programs, their first just Bonafide, this is a national title. Obviously did not have a national championship game before the BCS. Penix in the shotgun. I believe that's Rodgers to his left. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. They bring Rodgers out in motion, or excuse me, Nixon. McMillan Great has it, and like you said, William, a good tackle from Will Johnson around the 30 that saved Potentially a really big play. Another free rusher coming in for Michigan. It looked like Satan was still on a blitz. Penix again able to get the ball away quickly. McMillan on the out route. Got free for the short pickup. And but yeah, good tackle by Johnson. There's no one, no one behind him. Third and four now. Michigan defense looking for a big stop here. Under 14 minutes to go in the quarter. In the game. They motion out of Dunze, trips to the left. Penix looking, and it's dropped. He had Nixon wide open, and Will Nixon dropped it. Man, Stewart came in free again. Perfect pass for Nixon. He just flat out drops it. And, and it's interesting. Um, talked about that quote from 
running back coach Lee Marks for Washington, if you can't be a complete back, you will not play for us. That's a direct quote. Um, not having Dylan Johnson on the field for that big third down looms large for Washington. And he's clearly banged up. Morgan is going to draw a flag. That might be a first down. Morgan, I guess he got off the field. No, no flag. I think the refs missed that. He did not. Yeah, he missed it. Michigan so. had Thaw and Morgan back on the punt return. Samaj was sprinting off. And that's a five-yard penalty if it's called. And the refs missed it. And an automatic first down for Washington. Michigan, what a break. The Washington fans are rightfully upset. That is awful. Also, a miscue on Michigan. How do you have two guys who both think they're the punt returner going I, out on the field? This, but. this whole punt returner thing needs to stop. Pick a guy and trust him. It's, it's the game national of the year. championship it's, game. It's happened all year. I remember talking about it in week one, two, and three in the non-conference slate. It was Then it was Morrison yeah. thought who was going to get the job, and they went back and forth in those games. There was a number of times where Michigan kept getting pinned deep. It wasn't muff punts. It was just... Nobody would field the ball, and opponents were backing up Michigan real deep in their own territory. Eventually, it looked like Thaw kind of settled into the job. It's It's been such a weird dynamic because Samaj Morgan has been the kick returner for most, if not all, of the year. The kick return and punt return defense by Michigan has been excellent this season. They do not allow a lot of return yards. They have some aces and as it's, gunners. It's, and that is all a great credit to special teams coordinator Jay Harbaugh. What is the deal with the punt returners? I mean... It, Two muff punts in a semifinal really should have cost Michigan that game. This play should have cost them a first down. I mean, it needs to be short up. Like Alex said, it's game 15. This is it, last game of the year. Michigan and Washington have both set program highs for wins and going for a perfect 15-0. The, the 15 clubs membership has expanded in this four-team playoff era. There were a number of teams before 1900, before the schedule got formalized, that won 15 games. The only teams in this century and the 20th century, 2018 Clemson, 2019 LSU, 2022 Georgia, finishing 15-0. Michigan in 1902 prevented the University of Wisconsin from reaching 15-0, beating Chicago. Huh. And Chicago <laughs> was in the Big Ten. And in 1903, a 6-6 tie with Minnesota, who was 10-0 at the time was its only blemish in a 14-0-1 campaign. So Michigan twice has, has knocked off two teams on their way to a possible 15-win season. Both those teams ended with 14. I don't think Washington's ever done it. Michigan has a chance to do it again this time, the first time since in 120 years, um, which that kind of time frame has been very common to talk about with this Michigan season. This is possibly the greatest Michigan season of all time, even counting the point of minute teams from the early Fielding Yost days that were beating teams 65 to nothing every week. Um, this team so consistently has just won, especially in this time frame. Um, Big Ten wins, scoring 40 plus, two 50 plus games in a row against Big Ten teams. It's been an incredible season, just need to finish it out. Hello on our broadcast cam. First look in the second half let's go back to those last two plays Michigan shouldn't have possession right now yeah if they help if Nixon holds on to that pass out of the backfield or excuse me is that Rogers and that was, that was Nixon. Nixon Nixon but I mean he had an easy catch out of the backfield it was just Josiah Stewart came from that side on the blitz I think maybe his hands in the air and will lost Nixon. the ball and, and the penalty which should have been penalty on Morgan Michigan lucky to have this, this is an ascent Nixon a set, extra possession before transferring from Nebraska was a wide receiver yeah. and converted. Ten catches this year. Ball on their own 16. First and ten for the Wolverines. That's a give to Corum, or sorry, keeper McCarthy. And Drop. incomplete. Man. I really like the play design. I said I really like McCarthy in play action. And on the rollout, Cornelius Johnson running over the middle of the field. Usually so was open. sure-handed. This is a good ball from from JJ that's too. That's, ball. that's that's right on the numbers. Ball. That's a that's a clean drop from a, a guy who's been really has been over the drop problem this year. He's been really reliable all season and both teams are making unforced errors right now. Second on the team in receptions with 44 this season. Coming into the game just one behind Roman Wilson. Second and 10, give Corum bouncing it to the left. Looking for some daylight, picks up 3 maybe 4 giving Michigan a manageable third down and 6. 
Carson Barnhart out there on the left side blocking his defender as the pulling guard. Corum just trying to evade that extra unblocked defender. That was his biggest gain in a while. Four yards, third down and six. Michigan needs a break here if they haven't gotten a, a couple already. Put on another third down spot. Edwards, the tailback to the left of McCarthy. Three receivers to the right. A.J. Barner, the lone receiver on the left. J.J. going to throw for it. Trying to escape the pocket, taking off. McCarthy, and he's tripped up, going to be short. Heck of a hustle play there by Tuna Ufi. Ran down J.J., just, just got the ankle, but heck of a play by the edge, sticking with it. Bowie Tuna Ufi was the one that just got him by the shoestrings and slowed McCarthy down. You don't see J.J. taken down like that often. And just enough to plant his ankle weird. I think J.J. could have gotten out of that if the hand placement, it, it just was a play that was miraculous by the Washington defender, really. So Michigan will punt again with Tommy Doman standing at his own six yard line. Doman a spiraling kick, backs up Giles Jackson to his own 33 yard line and he is planted at the 32. Good coverage from the punt team. Joe Taylor. Joe freaking Taylor <laughs> doing it all on special teams this year. One of the most under underappreciated Wolverines. Um, special teams ace down there making the tackle on a, on a pretty shifty Giles Jackson. Shout out our fellas at the Michigan Daily. We had a nice feature on Joe Taylor this week. We just we talked about it a couple minutes ago, but Michigan's coverage units on special teams have been some of the best in the country this year. Kickoffs and punts, a number of special teams aces, William. I know you've done some work on those units, but Joe Taylor is just one of the guys. Caden Kolasar, another guy that has made a lot of plays on special teams. Jerome Nichols down there as well, I think, to assist on that tackle. Um, he, he, he hasn't been a guy that's been playing as much special teams, but it's all about effort on that, on that third side of the football. Um, guys like Samaj Morgan, who whatever these troubles with the return game have been, talked about how he didn't really see a side of the football other than offense before he came to Michigan, got to college, and realized that's a really prime way to get on the field. He said when he got to Michigan, he was actually on the sidelines for the Fiesta Bowl as an early enrollee that uh, he was not going to redshirt, not going to sit on the sidelines. He knew he would be on the field the next season. It hurt him not to be able to do anything against TCU. He's been on the field all year as a surprise freshman contributor, three-star recruit. And special teams is one of the ways that he has made an impact. Coming out of West Bloomfield, he was not highly touted at the national level, but has been a difference maker and is one of the best athletes, one of the best players with the ball in his hands on the team. I mentioned it earlier, an 87-yard punt return against Iowa in the Big Ten Championship game. Has scored on a couple of end arounds this season and just getting touches any way they can for him. And of course, Ron Bellamy, Michigan wide receiver coach, was his head coach at West Bloomfield, so he knew what Michigan was getting, and Samaj Morgan's just been, a, just been an explosive player this season, another weapon for Michigan in the near and future. Another media timeout here in the fourth quarter of play as Mr. Brightside echoes throughout NRG Stadium. The Michigan faithful obviously loving that. And as much as you talk about this song not being a hype song, it seems like Michigan always turns it up after they play this song on the PAs. I, I, I don't know what it is. It wouldn't get me hyped up. Maybe just having the fans be in it once again after kind of a sleepy second half so far. But, man, Michigan's just got to make a play to get on the other side of this hump they just can't seem to clear. Second half and a good old punt battle. A field position battle that for the most part Michigan's done well in. Off of the leg of Tommy Doman. Ball in the 33 after Giles Jackson was planted on the punt return. Johnson, the tailback. They fake it to him, Penix. Clean pocket, looking to throw, and he's got Polk. Nope, he dropped behind it. Him. Behind him. Slightly behind. Keon Sab was in there to knock it free. The third safety for the Wolverines making a big play there. Penix has not been on 
like he was against Texas, just missing throws by inches. A little bit of pressure by McGregor, but that's, that a, throw, that's a throw he makes. But also, I mean, Michigan was in a zone, and McMillan came all the way across, and to me, that's a ball that he has to hand. It hit, him, it hit it. him right in the hands. Penix going to throw again. Pumps Whoa. looking deep. Odunze got it. That's a beauty. He finally got Will Johnson on the double move. Great pump fake by Penix, staying tall in the pocket. Uh, referee's conferencing. And oh, and it's coming back. It back. The one time Penix and Odunze are able to connect on a deep ball, it comes back via a hold. We couldn't hear the number over the roar of the crowd, but that is a huge break for Michigan. Again, Michigan not playing crisp football, but their opponent has been a little bit sloppier, just like in the Alabama game, to give them an edge so far. Michigan was able to turn it up late in that game. The defense held long enough. Can they do the same here? Rosengarten, the senior, a false start at the right tackle. Clock ticks down to 11.20 in the game. Penix. Dropping back to throw. They set up a screen of McMillan, and he's dropped. Mikey Sainra still put him on the turf. Picked up two only on the screen. Might be stating the obvious, but Mikey Sainra still is a football player. He's just everywhere all over the field. He makes tackles after the catch and in the run game. He's become a great cover guy. He's just, just a great football player through and through. He's a Jim Harbaugh football player. You're seeing the energy come back to the Michigan defense right now. They they turn it off at a crucial time against Alabama in the fourth quarter. I think it's coming back right now. This Michigan defense has swagger. They go in every play and believe they can stop any offense in the country. Big chance here for the Huskies. Third and 18. Ball on their own 25. Penix looking to throw. He's got Johnson over the middle, and he's going to be dropped well short of the sticks. Little interior pressure on a stunt from Jalen Harrell. Got Penix to throw that football off his back foot. Didn't affect the accuracy, but he went for the check down of the running back. Short of the first down marker and another punt. I mean, this has just been an unbelievable they're, defensive showcase. They're putting the two returners out there again. Oh, so maybe it was a decoy last time, and Michigan just threw out an extra gunner or extra guy in the line. That was likely the issue. And Samaj, maybe Samaj yep. realized it on the way out. That, or, is, that is 11. Is it possible they had 11 last time and Morgan miscounted and ran off and that was why there was that no penalty? That could be it too, but I still don't like it. So two returners back for Michigan is... Another short punt. It is Thaw fair call. caught by Jake Thaw. He calls off Morgan and William is visibly upset <laughs> by this punting, by this punt return decision from Michigan and... He's so upset he's going to run out of the booth. So. I mean, right play there. I mean, Thaw made the fair catch with Gunner coming down on him. So it works out for Michigan, but quite unorthodox to have two guys back in a punt return. You don't, boy, oh boy, you don't see you that just, a lot. You feel like there has to be a better way for Michigan to handle that. I mean. Yeah. So the Wolverines survive another punt from Jack McAllister. We'll get the ball around the 30. It's marked at the 29. They're nursing a seven-point lead, 20 to 13. Only six points so far in this second half. Both teams traded field goals in the third quarter. And now we just wait. Which offense is going to make a play first? Or can the Michigan defense just ride this game out? William and I have talked about it a lot in the second half. If I'm Michigan, I... I think you try to establish the run, but if Washington conti is continually putting seven or eight guys in the box, I think you have to go play action. You have to try to throw downfield, throw to the sidelines, try to pick up plays in the air. And this is the this is sort of the moment. This is the big moment, the national championship, where if J.J. McCarthy could step up and be, and Jim Harbaugh is called him the greatest quarterback in Michigan history, if he's that guy. This is where he steps up and makes some plays that can win Michigan a national championship. And we talked about it on the Rose Bowl broadcast. He had, I mean, the legacy he would, regardless of whatever his numbers are in this game, the legacy he would leave if he's able to hoist that trophy in about 10 minutes of game time is unmatched in program history, a national title three CFP appearances, 3-0 against Ohio State, 2-0 as a starter. 
three Big Ten championships. Sure, sorry, I just had to run off that punt return. <laughs> I, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but that is like tailor-made to be mopped with a punt return or fair catching it, one guy coming up behind him. I mean, you have to imagine they practiced it, obviously, if they're putting it in the game, but oh. still. And also just a le one less blocker. I don't know. A tight know. formation here from Michigan. I imagine this is a run on first down. Well, now they'll spread out, but curious to see where they go here. Loveland split all the way out to the left. Empty the box. Right. They'll bring him back in. Morris, the other receiver on the left side. It's play action over the middle. Loveland, great catch. Ball was tipped. Loveland in space. 40, still going, and he's brought down at the 30. Colston Loveland getting loose. That was a throw by McCarthy. Took a big hit in his face as he delivered that ball. And, and it might have been tipped at the line. I think, I think he just, it's just his arm getting hit, floated on him. Similar throw to Roman Wilson towards the end of the Alabama game. Big stuff from J.J. there. And how about the run after catch from Loveland? Michigan goes quick. Handoff, Coram up the middle. Finds a crease and picks up about three or four. Michigan finding some juice. Going to one of their best players, Colston Loveland. Loveland used all that six foot six frame, and I, I talked about it. I thought he'd get more active in the Alabama game. I thought he was the key, given how much of a mismatch he is. He's got two big catches, excuse me, in this one. I also think on that play, kind of an RPO design. Washington backed out some players from the box when Michigan went spread. Yep. JJ pulls it, throws it, big completion. I really like the play call. As you said, spread him out in the play action, and even if you go to the run, there's a little more room for Corum, but again, Sort of tight right now on defense and offense right now. Mullins, the tailback, they fake it to him. J.J., bootleg, dumps it off for Roman Wilson. Wilson gets the corner and a little bit more. Run out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Michigan's offense finding some juice. And I know we've talked about their struggles. 281 yards on the ground. Over 420 total yards of offense in the game from Michigan. Well, and when you're... 200, almost 200 more yards than the other team. You'd expect to be up by more than seven. Obviously, they can punch it in here from the 15. Um, but those short drag routes to Roman on the, on the bootlegs, Alex, you talked about it. That's kind of bread and butter pass game for this team. Scored the game-tying touchdown on the Rose Bowl with that. Motion Corum to the left side of McCarthy. It's a give to Corum. Corum up the middle, and he'll be dropped short of the 10-yard line. I mean, I like what Sharon Moore and this offense is doing right now. You're... The play action, you're putting J.J. in space. The, the short passes, it gives him a couple easy reads on the same side of the field, and it also can open up the run game, perhaps. If Slowly but surely, this Michigan passing offense becomes an increasing threat. And now we're approaching the red zone. Things are going to tighten up, but if you can open up more room in the box for Corum to work, get to the second and third level, that's really ideal for Michigan. Second down and seven now. Ball in the 12. Seven minutes, 20 seconds left on the clock here in the national championship. Michigan holding on to that seven-point lead, looking to extend it. Corum, right side, breaks a tackle. Blake oh, Corum! What a run, what a run. Touchdown, oh. Michigan! Oh! Doesn't How get better. How about that from Blake Corum? Number two getting shifty. Complete reverse of field. I, and maybe not complete reverse, just... I believe I'm they call speechless. it stopping on the dime. I'm, I'm speechless, but... I talked about earlier, Blake Corum kind of has a little more explosiveness in this game than we've been seeing. And that, that was, is evidence of it. That was exactly what Michigan needed. That's exactly what I've been looking for. That's a big, I'm assuming this extra point goes, and that's a big seven for Michigan, up two TDs. And and you can't be certain with this team right now. But I think that in. Went, went through, through off the doink. Alex Miller <laughs> with nearly the jinx of the century. High snap by Wagner on that mess with the operation. <laughs> James Turner doinked it off the left upright, and it snuck through. I haven't seen a doink go in in a long time. I, I, I enjoyed that. But, but yeah, I mean, up two touchdowns, 7-0-9. This Washington offense, I mean, if you've watched Washington football all year, they have made some incredible comebacks. This game is absolutely not set in stone, but Michigan up two scores is and what was, the Wolverines want. That was a big drive, William, because to go up two scores now at this point in the game – Yep. against a Washington offense that's been struggling, and now there's even more of a sense of urgency for that team to get something going. Maybe you're able to force a turnover, but just to, to get that juice back yeah. on offense. I kept emphasizing it 
that Michigan needed that drive to go up two scores just because I thought Washington was going to break the seal at some point. Um, they did hit a deep shot to Adunze finally, but a holding penalty brought it back. And they've just been killing themselves with penalties and, and with miscues in this game. A lot of plays where Washington has just not been able to, uh, to be complete. I mean, they've had some uncharacteristic drops, some uncharacteristic misses from Michael Penix, but they've also, because of that, been a few minor mishaps away from a couple big plays, and this offense can be explosive. They've shown that all season. They're, I mean, they, of course, had that big play to Odunes. They brought back on the hold la or penalty last time, and we'll see. I expect them to go through the air. That's, that's their game. That's what you need down two scores. Year 10 of the 14 playoff, the college football playoff era. Past champions being shown on the screen. Nick Saban and the Tide greeted with some boos from the Nick crowd. Nick Saban and the Tide, I remember those guys. I will say, these are the best two teams in the country. I think that's been proven at this point. I mean, 14 and 0, undefeated regular season, conference champions, took care of business in the semifinal round. This is. This is the game you want as a college football fan. These are the two teams you want playing here. Yeah, and as much as you could talk about maybe Texas being the easier matchup for Michigan, which I don't know if I necessarily agree with, it's so much fun that they'll have to beat a 14-0 team to improve to 15-0, proving a lot of the doubters for various reasons wrong this season if they win this game, um, having to do it against the best, having to do it against in the last game the betting tied with them favorite to win the national title. Uh, if Michigan wins this game, they've exercised all the demons from the previous two and, you know, previous 25, if you want to go that far. As they show the trophy have on to the say, Jumbotron. Very underwhelming trophy. I, I, I kind of like it. They have that big base that they take the trophy off. <laughs> the crystal ball the needs crystal to ball come back. Perfect. I don't know why they got rid of it, but whatever. 7.09 to go. This Washington offense has to start humming. And I feel like it's got to be this possession, or if not, they've got to get a quick stop. Because 7.09 left, there's not an unlimited amount of time for Washington to work with. Certainly a lot of time, of course, but. Daniel Ngata, the deep man for the Huskies. We haven't seen him really try much today. Does that change here? Doman is a touchback machine, so I'm not entirely sure. Doman nope. boots it in. Penix will take over at the 25 again. Same story. Touchback machine, especially playing at a dome. Um, Michigan's into it right now. This bench is active, and when this team is having fun, they're at their best, and they're having fun right now. Josiah Stewart just did a half gritty coming out <laughs> <laughs> to assume his position on the left edge. Empty set for the Huskies. Three receivers to the left of Penix, two to the right. Michael Penix looking to throw. He's got Polk. Jalen Polk breaks a couple of tackles, but continues to fight and is eventually dropped by a trio of Wolverines, including Rod Moore. Jalen Polk, a transfer from Texas Tech and Lufkin, Texas native, about 130 miles up US 59. So somewhat of a homecoming, I guess you could say. Very hard in four yards for Jalen Polk on that. Broke about four tackles. Second and six, ball in the 29. About 6.30 to go in the contest. McMillan motioned left to right. Penix looking deep, and he's got Odunze. Odunze breaks a tackle and is brought down by Sainer still. Rome Adunze with a big one there. He got the last one called back and finally connects with Michael Penix. And Adunze wide open. Penix pressure in his face. Not a, not a great ball under thrown, but think, Michigan not home in coverage. I think if that ball's in stride, Adunze might go to the house. I mean, there was not a lot of Michigan blue anywhere near Odunze. Huge pickup there for Washington. Big chunk play, and it's going to be another start. false start. It was the right tackle. For what? I mean, I Roger talk, Rosengarten got I, burned again. We talk about the little things adding up for Michigan. 
mistake-wise. Washington, every single good thing they've done has, has been offset. And now backed up first and 15 from the 32. Four down territory really with five and change to go in the fourth quarter. First and 15 for the Huskies. Ball on their own, th or, excuse me, on the Michigan 32. Under six to play, Penix looking, stepping up in the pocket and under pressure. Had to alligator over the top of everybody. Had to alligator on that throw with pressure and coming. He got hit, sent to the turf. Looking for Westover, just floated it over his head. And the story of the game has been Penix unable to be clicking on that elite level that we've seen him at this season. And you guys have both talked about it. The pressure from Michigan, a big part of that. Penix last game against Michigan, 30 for 50 for Indiana. He's 24 41 right now. 5.37 to go. Second and 15. Empty set again. Four receivers to the right. Odunze, the lone man to the left. Another false start. You're going to call that. Penix dumps it over the middle to the tailback. That was Will Nixon. Holds on to this one and only got a couple. Low throw brought him to the ground. Right side of the offensive line, I thought, jumped early. Maybe timed the, the snap especially well, but Michigan still got pressure in there with, with Mason Graham and Derek Moore. Only two on the completion there, so still third and 13. Clock continues to tick down toward five minutes. I mean, we'll talk about it after, but I think Washington's in four down territory right here. They might try to pick up seven or so and then go on for it on fourth. Bunch to the right, Westover, the lone receiver to the left. Nixon, the running back. Penix under pressure, taking a shot for McMillan. He can't hold it in, haul it in. And that's incomplete. It was a tough play to make. Good coverage from Mike Sainer still. Michigan continuing with these stunts on the inside. I, I thought Washington's offensive line ha has done largely a good job. Gave Penix enough time to throw, but he has just been off on the deep ball today. Wasn't a lot of room to get that ball in either. Was, Sainer still was yeah. running stride for stride. But those are there. the throws he made against Texas. And maybe that's a once in a, in a season I mean, kind of performance. He was. No, he was dialed in against Texas. There was no question. He it was, just hasn't been there today. But again, again the, I mean, even a perfect ball, Sammer still can make a play there. Empty set again as there's a timeout taken by Michigan, I believe. Yep, Jim Harbaugh wants a second to look over this fourth and 13. Huskies keeping the offense out there with under five minutes to go. It's a two-score game, you need to come away with one here. The defense can feel it. This crowd can feel it. I mean, that was why I sort of mentioned before the last play, if four down territory, if Washington was considering going short to try to make it a fourth and manageable, and instead we're back to fourth and 13. Tough pickup coming up. Ball on the Michigan 30. Huskies need to get to the 17-yard line to move the chains. Fourth and 13, 4.52 to go in the national championship. Michigan up 14, excuse me, 27 13, 14 point lead. Penix with Dylan Johnson to his right. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Michigan. Receives the snap, pressure coming. He's flushed. Mike Barrett right in his face. Flag is thrown as McMillan is tackled by Will Johnson. I, I think. That was a whole bunch of stuff going on in that play. Penix is down on the turf. He's helped up, but comes up gingerly. He got smoked. The reason he got smoked, Washington was not expecting the snap. It was snapped early by Parker Brailsford, the center. I think there's going to be a hold on Washington. Will Johnson thought he was beat, so he tackled Odunze. No, I don't know. If, I, I thought Will Johnson just that the ball was underthrown, and Odunze tried to come back through him. and just So... Offsetting penalties, it was a hold on Washington, and again, Johnson just tackled McMillan. Wait, so. I, I'm saying, like, he was wanting the penalty rather than the touchdown, and, and that's a reasonable play to make if you're Johnson. It does offset what happened in the backfield, but another mistake by Washington. Penix did not accept the, expect the snap, neither did the rest of the offensive line. That's why Michigan had three rushers. So we'll redo fourth and 13, about 15 seconds tick off the clock. Oh, Dunze, the lone receiver on the left. Three receivers to the right. Johnson, the running back, next to Penix. They motion out Westover all the way to the right. Penix, clean pocket, delivers. Picked off! Mikey Sainristil's got it! 
and he's going the other way. Sandra still over midfield. One man to beat, he's got a convoy. Sandra still down inside the 10. How about that? You said it was a clean pocket, Kellen. Free rusher came in late, and, and Penix had to hurry that throw. You see Harrell off the edge, overthrows McMillan, and Sane Rastill, who has made a Michigan career out of taking balls back to the house. Oh, I thought that one was. Doesn't do it here. He had one against, I believe, Rutgers, Michigan State, and one more that I'm missing. Pick sixes. Can't get it there, but Michigan's offense set up on the doorstep to put this game away. Mike Sanders is a baller. I mean, that's the sentence right there. That's a there. good way to put it. He's just, I mean, he's just so good, and he's only getting better. I mean, he's, like, obviously we all know start as a wide receiver, but he's just getting better and better as a corner, and I'm really excited to watch him on Sundays in the future. These fans can taste it. This sideline can taste it. Two-score lead, 4.30 to go in the fourth quarter, goal to go from the eight. J.J. under center, Corum the tailback, turns. Gives Corum fighting forward. Short. He's going to be on the doorstep of the end zone. Everybody in the building knows you're giving it to two. Um, the nation's leader in touchdowns. I do want to say, as much as we've kind of talked about McCarthy maybe unable to step up to the big moment consistently, Penix in this game has folded at every big moment for Washington. Two interceptions, one right out of the second half when momentum was on the Husky side. A big play there on fourth down, really not giving a receiver a chance. And even on the pass plays they have completed, it, it, it's been an underthrow to Adunze. Power set not for great. Michigan. Any guesses where this football's going? I already I said couldn't it. imagine. JJ turns, gives Corum wide open into the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan. Blake Corum punches it in. And the Wolverines have a three-score lead here in Houston. Washington has had their last 10 games this season be decided within 10 points. That's the longest streak in AP poll history since 1936. That's in danger of being broken here by the Wolverines, pending the extra point to open up a 21-point lead. Turner on for the PAT now. Snap and hold both good, and that kick is good. Washington no there. also the nation's leading 21-game win streak active right now. It'll be superseded by Michigan after this game. It's going to be one short of the program modern history record for Washington, a 22 straight in between that national title winning season in 1991. A lot of streaks coming to an end. Washington undefeated straight up against the spread this season as a dog. Um, not going to happen in this game, it seems. Michigan closed it around a six-point favorite. Washington had beaten Oregon twice, um, beaten Texas as a dog. Kalen DeBoer has made a career out of winning games that he maybe not, uh, it had not been predicted that he would. Um, but again, Michigan bucking another trend. You talk about true talent the last two years, the first five or six years of Jim Harbaugh's tenure. Haven't won a bowl game since 2015 until the Alabama game. I mean, this win was a Michigan football, if, if, if they hold on with up three scores with 337 to go, this is the Michigan football way to win. You're running the ball dominantly, your defense steps up and makes a couple excellent big plays throughout the game, and you're up big. Doman boots it, will be returned. Nagata with no space there, he's dropped. Inside the 15, kick coverage for unit, unit for Michigan. Gets their first crack at it and is stifling per usual. And I think now it's time to ask the question, this defensive unit in the last 10 or so years of college football has got to be right up there with some of the best of them. Coming into this game, allowing 10.2 points per game, the second lowest in the playoff era. 2021 Georgia, I believe, was number one, allowing under 10 points a game. And Michigan, for a majority of the year, was under 10. Um, just over the last few, Alabama letting up 20. They did shut out Iowa to boost their number. But, <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, the defense has been incredible, especially in a season where offense is down. This defense has still stu uh, stood out among the rest. Michigan 
Pass rushers pinning their ears back to get after Penix. First and 10, he's gonna throw for it. Over the middle, got Polk. Jalen Polk continuing to make players miss and he's eventually brought down. Flag. And a flag is thrown late. They're gonna get Will Johnson. Uh, I don't, I mean, we'll see what they call, but. Potentially. Right, I was gonna say if he led with the head, I don't think it was a late hit, but. He didn't lead with his head, but he got the head of Polk. Yeah. Polk was getting I tackled. I thought he was diving over and Polk was kind of sliding. I, I the other with implication there. of this play, Will Johnson would be ejected from this game, but also the first half of the season opener. Huh. Um, is, that, is it carry over? Yep, there? it does. And that is targeting. They're going to review it, um, as they always do with these plays. But uh, <laughs> Will Johnson, I think, even with Mikey Sanderson's interception, Corm's two touchdowns, all the other plays in this game. I think Will Johnson, the way that he's played Roma Dunze, has been incredible in this game. He did allow one big catch. Um, but against that was Penix and Adunze, that one, it, was, it was taken back due to a hold. And, and the big play to Adunze that set them up inside the red zone was on Rod Moore and Josh Wallace. So really, I think. I, I would be shocked if this sticks. Uh, it's really because Polk is falling down. I, I mean, what is. But Will I, Johnson supposed to do teleport in midair? I, I, he hit him in the. Eight. But it was kind of leading with his head. I mean, but he hit him. There's with the some actually that side. Well, that maybe looks shoulder. But and all right, there we go. I think back. that's the right call. If yeah, Polk, I, I think that's the right if call. If Polk isn't falling down, Will Johnson is leading with the correct tackling technique of meeting him right. around his thighs with his shoulder, uh, and it just so happens in football, players are moving around. They are human beings, and, um, and they're moving quickly. Yeah, like. Will Johnson can't just veer off. He, he's got a course once he leaves his feet. Officials get that one right. Second and three now for the Huskies. Ball on their 24. Clock continues to tick toward 310. Penix claps his hands, receives the snap. Michigan, pressure coming, and that is incomplete. Threw what? that behind McMillan. And again, more pressure in his face. I believe that was Jalen Harrell and then Mason Graham up the middle. Mason Graham had an unreal spin move up the middle. Sets up another third down for the Huskies. Obviously, four down territory at this point. You're just hoping for any kind of miracle. But under three minutes, down three scores. Nothing short of divine intervention is required. Empty set for the Huskies. Three receivers to the left, two to the right. Penix. Throws over the middle. He's got Nixon, the running back, who's going to be down. stopped short. And so fourth and one for the Huskies now. And again, Michigan covering everything deep. I, I mean, you come into this game expecting Michigan at least to, to let something break loose. And there have been chances for the Huskies. They just haven't capitalized. And, and on this drive where they need scores quick, nothing. Fourth and one for the Huskies. And it's a handoff up the middle. They're just gonna keep their offense out here. Nixon got it. That'll move the chains, but keeps the clock moving. Under, as we approach two minutes, pass over the middle of the field, incomplete, looking for Westover. Keon Sab right in there to make the hit and draw the ball free. 2.04 to go, 21 point lead. Um, or excuse me, that was the other tight end, Josh Cuevas. I mean, you were you were ready for the worst in the Alabama game, but this is I mean, a lot less drama up in the booth. I can tell you that. This is a feeling I don't know if I've ever experienced before. <laughs> we're all <laughs> we're all Detroit people. Our teams haven't done something like this before. Never. 2.04 to go. Michigan 124 seconds away from glory. Penix stepping up, and that is nearly intercepted again. Colson tipped it, and Will Johnson unable to make the play after it was tipped. Two chances for it, really. And well, Colson with that club on his left hand, tough to haul one in. Penix was down after that play, and I don't think he's I don't think he's been completely right for yeah. the last four or five, maybe more plays. You talk about a guy who's, who's not completely right. Junior Colson has a club on his hand. That's why he didn't make the pick. He's had that for the past few weeks. Even, I mean, past few months, had really. two on earlier in the in December. 
Under two minutes now, third and 10 for the Huskies. Michigan, free runner coming in at Penix. He's hammered and just has to heave it out of bounds. Michael Penix has been taking a beating. Yeah, he's hurt now. He's been hurt. It, uh, but like, that's a shoulder separation. I mean, I don't, I don't want to speculate that much, but he is like holding his shoulder like he can't support it. And he's his right shoulder. And obviously he's a lefty. He's had both shoulders separate once at Indiana, Talk or excuse me, it. twice at Indiana. His, his, his off history. arm and his other, and his throwing arm. And, two, and right now he's not feeling good. Two torn ACLs for Penix as well. Talk about a guy who's been battled through so much. He was a monster at Indiana, tore his ACL, transferred with his then OC, Kalen DeBoer. Beat Michigan from Indiana for the first time in 40 years. Followed Kalen DeBoer to Washington and has been a superstar for the Huskies. He's holding his rib cage too. Yeah, I, I mean, if you have seen um, when Matt Stafford gets buried and has <laughs> to come back onto the field for the game-winning two-point conversion his rookie year against the Browns, that I, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. That's a similar way yeah. that Penix is holding his arm right now. So Michigan calls timeout. And the game. I, I know you want to keep him out there, but you're down by 21 points and. It might be one of those things where Penix just is saying, I'm not coming out of the game. I yeah. don't think he's that type of player. I know, but fourth, fourth down and ten, and you don't want to give up. It's just he's still out there. You don't want to see more injury on top of an already kind of serious injury, it's, ex especially for a guy that um, there was some buzz after that Texas game that he might go top 20 in the NFL draft. Even higher than that. Backup Dylan Morris was in the huddle there, but – Stays on the sidelines. And Morris, a Washington native who will transfer after the year, started two games in 20 and 21. Three receivers to the right for Penix who will throw, and it's incomplete. Michigan's going to get the football back. And this game's all but over. They can taste it. And Michigan 109 seconds away from eternal glory. I do want to say that I was kind of proven right earlier when I was saying that this game could end in a blowout uh, like the last five national championship games. It was so close for a long while, but now Michigan's opened it up, um, and it won't be as exciting of a finish as the two semifinal games. But for Michigan fans, it will. Yet again, Michigan's defense gets a stop. And this time the offense... Gets to come onto the field and burn the last 109 seconds. McCarthy on the field, Peyton O'Leary out there as the third wide receiver with Wilson and Johnson, and it's a handoff to Corum. Corum up the middle, no space there. DeBoer is going to call his timeouts. He's got three of them. That's what I was wondering. Or no, I guess not. They blew the whistle like he called a timeout, but he's going to let the clock run out. Well, I think if you're Michigan, then you enter victory formation. And a good gesture from Harbaugh to get O'Leary a snap in the national title game as Max Bredesen now checks in, along with Matthew Hibner. Trevor Keegan on his knees, now up, uh, just kind of absorbing the moment. A guy who will also be going to the NFL. You talk about a number of these guys. This is the last few snaps they will play as Michigan Wolverines. Victory for Michigan, formation for the Michigan Wolverines. It's going to take one more kneel down, and then that'll do it. How about the boys in blue? They've done it. This is the team that all season had that kind of buzz. Is this the team? Every year it feels like there's one team that's head and shoulders above the rest. And it's been Michigan. How about 14 points in back-to-back -back closing periods in the two semifinal games? Seven points in McCarthy fourth quarter. Takes the knee. That'll do it. The Michigan Wolverines are national champions. Ann Arbor party like it's 1997. The Wolverines are the best in all the land. Where's the confetti? Michigan. Oh, Klaus got to hit triple zeros. Has claimed their national championship. Triple zeros, there it is. 
It's official. Your 2024 national champions wear the maize in blue. It's the Michigan Wolverines as the maize in blue confetti will fall through NRG Stadium. 2024, the year of the Wolverine. Got to take some pictures, just like we did at the Rose Bowl. And there is no better feeling for every player, coach, staffer, manager on that field right now wearing maize and blue than this right here, what they're feeling right now. And Mitch is 15 and 0 for the first time in program history. And they are national champions. From sea to shining sea, Michigan is number one. I mean, they did it. Yeah. Perfect season, 15 and 0. What a run these last three years have been for this team. I mean, this is the best roster that Michigan's had in these last couple of years. The defense, credit to the defense. I mean, three points, second half. I mean, what a, what a showing by this Michigan team. And i happy for everyone in this program. The Alabama game definitely elicits a different reaction having coming down to the wire and having like a whole 10 minutes to absorb this feeling it is really amazing. Um, we're a bit subdued in here, though, I have to say. But it, it's different. I just think it's just the, the lack of like thriller ending. Yeah, Michigan. And I mean, for like, at no point did I really think that Michigan was going to lose once they jumped out to the 14-point lead. I have to be honest. And for these Husky players that are being showered in maize and blue confetti and slowly walking off the field. This is something Michigan, not at the national championship stage, but has experienced these last two seasons. And you see, you know, everyone remembers the picture of J.J. McCarthy standing watching the purple and silver confetti fall for TCU, the famous picture of Donovan Edwards, J.J., and Andrew Anthony watching the red and black confetti fall in the Orange Bowl. It's maize and blue confetti here in Houston for the national championship. And the Michigan Wolverines are number one. I mean, Michigan saying. Boy, does that feel good to say. I mean, they've been saying those who stay will be champions, and that's the case this year. And now Oklahoma is the only team with multiple college football playoff uh, appearances without a national title. They had four. Michigan finally doing it in their third shot. Getting over the hump. Jim Harbaugh and his staff, everything they've done since 2020, the COVID year, when this program looked like it was in free fall. Two and four, blowout losses to the best teams in the Big Ten. Losing to what was a really bad Michigan State team at the Big House. Antoine Simmons, heck of a game. To come back and do what they've done is flat out remarkable. And we get to chill in here for a while. There's lightning in the area, and we've been invited to stay inside the stadium. Uh, so I think we're all going to get to know each other, all, I guess, 60,000 that are still left in here. Cheerleaders are playing in the confetti. Will Johnson, I think, should win MVP. Is getting crowned by Jim Credit Harbaugh. to the defense. It was an unreal defensive showing against what's been an unbelievable passing offense all season. They did it. <laughs> Jim Harbaugh just crowned Will Johnson. Top of the college football world. Feels good to say. I Feels mean, good. <laughs> no, it's – it's. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is what these guys work every day for. This is – It's how you want to finish a season. It's how you feel for Jim Harbaugh right now. I mean, this guy, he did it. He was hired to Michigan to bring them back to glory. And he has done just that. As Makari Page has shown. Makari Page had a good game. To some big cheers, a couple of big tackles from him. But back to Harbaugh. 
for a guy that came into Michigan, guns a blazing, was very vocal and open about his thoughts and what happened and faced his adversity, really changed things up, overhauled his staff, let go of some guys, changed his ways a little bit, and has sculpted and formed this program into national champions and true national championship contenders for the foreseeable future as Michigan President Santa Ono is seen on field congratulating Harbaugh. Hey, uh, anybody in Houston party at the JW Marriott oh, Galleria? Don't, no, you <laughs> <laughs> but what a privilege it's been for us. I know I speak for everyone up here when I say that to be able to be here to call the national championship game is an unbelievable privilege that we get as student broadcasters. So thank you to everyone who's tuned in and been follow whether you've been following us for years since week one against East Carolina, or whether you just started following us today, found us on YouTube, whatever it may be, turned your FM dial to 88.3 on accident. Thank you for tuning in. Skycam has like a lot of streamers on it. That's kind of funny looking. I mean, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I mean, I, I think I speak for all of us that this is the odds we ever call another national championship in our lives are is quite low. So, I mean, this is an incredible opportunity. I'm grateful uh, to be here. And I mean, we did this after the the Rose Bowl. I'm not going to get as emotional as that, but. <laughs> So many thank yous to dole out to people that have made this possible, to the leadership staff at WCBN, Laura and Jacob and Jim Campbell and Manos for helping us set everything up with the broadcast. As John Harbaugh is seen with his brother Jim on I saw field. he was going to be is here. Tom Crean? Uh, to <laughs> Tom Crean. Adam Bressler and Charlie Brigham. Shout out, Bressler. Ran the station before Shout us. Shout out, Adam Bressler put us in such a good spot this season to keep things going to Zach Linfield who's helped me and William so much with growing his broadcasters and developing on the mic uh, and so many others Shout that out have Liggett for um, making us feel included for the past two weeks weird uh, to think of myself I mean, as an alumni of that school but William and I started broadcasting High school basketball games our junior year of high school at University Liggett School. We were we would put two volleyball like ref stanchions together and stand on those with an iPad. Yeah. And uh, now we're calling the national championship game. So thank you, Mom. Weird. I love weird you. how that happens. Love you too, Mom, Dad, Garrett, Ian, Nanny, my whole family tuning in. Everyone. Chrissy, Griffin, Connor, Owen. Jeff, had a lot of fun staying with you in Dallas. Thank you. <laughs> My whole family. I know there's too many people all that I can. All the series. For me to name everyone, but all, all the Flynn's that are listening all across the country. Flynn family clan. Miller, you got anyone you want to shout out? Well, you've got the headset on. Well, I was going to say something about shout out to everyone part of WCBN. Oh, I absolutely. All our past current members who, I mean, this is obviously football is our, this is the big game for us, but. It's shout out to everyone who's covered the baseball, softball, volleyball. Nabil I mean, Baig. And it's it's not My just first broadcast. that. It's it's the people that just make all this stuff happen. Yeah. To Sydney for running our yep. socials and making graphics to help somewhere. promote all of our broadcasts. Uh, everyone that's helped recruit members and just make things happen, fundraise. Owen Crane for putting together so many good graphics for us and helping out with all of that. I mean, this is not just the four people in this booth right now that have made this happen. Kendall, show yourself. <laughs> Kendall, is anyone have, you want to shout out? We have four people in the booth. Kendall, get, get your moment in the sun here. Yeah. Um, my dad, obviously, he's my biggest fan. Uh, my mom, my sister, though she didn't listen because she didn't care. Uh, James, my best friend. And KFTN 92.7, Fenton, Missouri, my first radio station, my high school radio station, and everyone there for making me fall in love with broadcasting. And now we're at the national championship. That's insane. That's it. What do we got, 10 minutes to burn? 
Yeah, we've got to stay on air for <laughs> ten more minutes. I mean, this is a this is a special win. This is. I didn't think we would be here. I mean, it's. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I don't know. I mean, like Michigan, turn it on in the fourth quarter. Yeah, let's let's talk um, some ball. I mean, let's. Shout out to my family. JJ McCarthy it. finishing ten for eighteen, 140 yards. No interceptions, no turnovers for Michigan. The two picks, big. Two running backs for Michigan, Edwards and Corum, both over 100 yards. Over two 300 rushing yards for that's Michigan. Two that's touchdowns Michigan each football. on the ground for them. I mean, that is, that is how Jim Harbaugh wants to win football games. And a lot of people talked about the game plan coming in for Michigan, how you get this done. It's control the clock, limit possessions for Washington, make each possession matter more, and pound the football. And that's what Michigan did. And Adunze for Washington, who had a whole bunch of 100-plus yard receiving games this year, still finishes with 87, but no other Washington receiver over 42 yards receiving. Well, that was Jack Westover. A lot of that came on the 144-yard bomb. Yeah. I, I don't – I agree with you. I hope Will Johnson gets this MVP. His, he was great in coverage. I wouldn't mind if it was Sander still. I mean, Mikey Sander still – is everything this program's about is a football player. He plays hard every snap. He's done everything this coaching staff has ever asked of him. Eight tackles and a pick. He's just he's a great football play per, great football player, excuse me, and shout out to Mike Sanders still for what he's done for this program. I mean if you're looking at MVP picks, I think it's between two guys. It's between Blake Corum and Will Johnson. I I would guess it's gonna go to Corum, but I think Will Johnson has a – Mike Sainer still, too. Your three stars of the game yeah. are those three guys. Um, Shout out to Donovan Edwards, though. Stepped up. A bit That's a big a way. Big, big plays in the first half that Michigan needed. Two 40-plus yard scores. Got it done. And I, I just I, – for Donovan, I mean, this has been a sort of a long year. He hasn't been as efficient as he was last year. And what I th I think a lot of people expected for him to be a massive junior, er, junior season and just – Kudos to him for staying ready and making big plays in, on the biggest stage of college football. As we're awaiting the trophy presentation ceremony, Reese Davis on the podium with Jim Harbaugh and a number of these Michigan seniors is... <laughs> Just soak it in. I mean, if, if you're simulcasting us with ESPN on TV or for everyone in the stadium. I just, this is, this is a special moment. I mean, as a Detroit sports fan, I've, I've never seen a team I care about win anything. And as a student at the University of Michigan, the Michigan Wolverines are number one undisputed national title, national champions. It's a special moment. I'm trying to look for Ben Herbstreit right now. I mean, top, top of the world, and just there's still a number of Huskies on the field. Jalen Polk is just sitting at the 10 yard line, watching this whole ceremony. As Blake Corum is awarded offensive MVP. 21 carries, 134 yards, two touchdowns for the engine of this offense. Pretty cut and dry. Had a big 59-yard carry, 6.4 yards a pop. Also, I mean, we, we talk about it, but always never talked about enough. Offensive line is so big in the run game, and those guys, just as they've done all year, created space for Corum to work. And Keegan, I mean, Zinter is obviously not playing, but those guys have had such great mission careers. And this is a a whole line of grad students who have just been awesome and whether they've been here for only a year or more, guys who've been here their whole careers have just been awesome in the maize and blue. As Blake Corum drops the mic with business is finished. He came back this year saying he had unfinished business. And how about it? Well, he cleaned all that business up right now. He stood business on business tonight. Finished. And how about it? Will Johnson gets defensive MVP. Well deserved. I think I called it in the Big Ten Championship against Purdue. I was wrong. I'm vindicated now. 
Can't wait to get back home to Gross Point. Will Johnson, Gross Point's With own. An MVP. Shout out um, Al I, Alex Shaheen, his quarterback at Gross Point South. <laughs> my, my, I played high school basketball and we played Gross Point South when Will Johnson was there. And off rip, they won the tip. Will Johnson sprinting straight to the hoop, lob, back door. Somebody on our team had the guts to jump with him and broke it up, but it was Terrence Hurt. And, uh, but yeah, we <laughs> learned real quick what five-star athleticism looks like. 15-0, and 0, man. I mean, I saw like when, Wa or when, not Washington, when LSU went 15-0 and 0 with that team. And I, Clemson the year before with Trevor Lawrence, Joe Burrow. This is a special, special team. And we've known it all year how special this team was, but. Special is exactly right. As Jack Harbaugh is brought up to the podium. Thank you to everyone who's <coughs> stayed with us this time. We'll be. <laughs> Jack Harbaugh <laughs> adds a little extra flavor to this famous who's got it better than us. Coach Harbaugh wearing the buffs. A word that starts with F that I'm not going to say on air, but I think we can all take a guess at what that was. We'll be wrapping up in about two minutes here, but again, a huge thank you to everyone who's tuned in on 88.3 FM Ann Arbor and on our YouTube broadcast. Jim Harbaugh, a national champion head coach for the Michigan Wolverines. He's done it. He's brought a title back to Ann Arbor as the head man. He did what he was hired to do. And whatever happens in the offseason, this program is set up for success in the future. Just special, special stuff. Shout out Michigan men. Well, I was kudos to what's been an unreal season for Washington. I mean, I think they had a lot of lot of doubters throughout this season. That they won a lot of close games, and what Kalen DeBoer did coming to Washington, building this program, developing these guys, and has just created had a great team all year. And Michael Penix played tough today, and. Polk and Odunze and a lot of these guys on both sides of the ball have really bright futures for Washington and they'll be in the Big Ten so Michigan will be seeing a lot more of them but Wolverines and, how about it um, Jalen McMillan Jalen Polk is still at the, the 10 yard line McMillan comes over to help him up and uh, I think that's Odunze all three of the wide receivers right now all pros going into the tunnel Dylan Johnson was right before them Washington stars, and I assume Michael Penix is getting medical treatment right now. Uh, but the five offensive stars for Washington all accounted for watching the trophy presentation ceremony. And as much as we're celebrating the heart breaks for those guys on the other end of it, um, they certainly were deserving to be in this position. And it just so happened that a different team won the game. Um, but I, I think Washington under Kalen DeBoer, as long as he's the head coach in Seattle, it's going to be trouble for other teams. With that, we'd like to thank you so much for tuning into WCBN Sports live coverage of Michigan football. For myself, Kellen Flynn, for William, for Alex, for Kendall, and for the rest of our WCBN and WCBN Sports family, thank you for listening. Good night, and go blue. The Wolverines are national champions.